I believe I've heard on the grapevine is where the cool kids hang. How are we doing? Have we had a lovely Thursday? Second Thursday in a row. It's weird. I was convinced all last night's stream that I it was Thursday then. And it's Thursday again today. We've been on lockdown for months and it's finally Groundhog Day, apparently. Um, Eddie, thank you very much for the sub. In already 10 whole months. I am well, Eddie. Thank you very much. Um, Shady wants to know why have I just spent £200 on new PC parts? Because you've got the illness, Shady. We all have the illness. I've just punched my microphone. Apologies if we just had a <laughs> just come through. NASA's Perseverance Mars rover. We're landing in an hour. Yeah. It's only Mars, isn't it? It's only Mars. How are we all doing now? Are we all good? Maybe it'll be Thursday tomorrow. If it is Thursday tomorrow, then we're definitely going to get this season finished. And um, we started a new season last night. Um, Anna's on nights next week. So Sunday night will be the last stream. The last, uh, the last Hanetli stream for a week. So actually, I don't know if that's true. I'll explain a little bit later. In fact, maybe I'll explain now. Um, Andy started having like in-home respite this week. Um, as in, in our home, there's been people coming in to sit with him. Uh, well, not necessarily sit with him, do stuff with him. The idea is they'll eventually start taking him out. So I am pondering a couple of afternoon streams next week when they're here. Um, because if they're here with Andy and Anna's asleep, then I could potentially squeeze a couple of afternoon streams in next week. But there won't be any evening streams next week. Because in the evening, I will be full on um, dad duty next week. But... Yeah, hopefully we're going to get the season finished by the end of this week. Hopefully we're going to win the league and then we can leave Wales and go and find out where is the next leg on our adventure. Non-league to Mars next year. That'd be brilliant. Um, you don't think space is even remotely cool? Not really. I'd, I'd much rather all the money and research was focused on um, technology that I can play with rather than I'm not going to go to Mars. Like we talked about last night, I want that I want to be able to transfer my consciousness into the internet. I'd much rather they spent the money on that. Going a, going abroad is a bit of a, going abroad. Going abroad to different planets, bit of a waste, really. I've not even been to Japan. Why do I need to go to Mars? A Kev stream and watching the Gers. What a night. What a night. I imagine that's Rangers, is it? The Gers. Uh, Liam Holmes, thank you very much for the sub. Can anyone help me out? My brother's looking for a PC. It'll be six, seven hundred pound PC specialist. Run games like Minecraft, FM, Fortnite without any trouble. Um, I imagine most PCs in that kind of range on PC specialist will be all right. They do some pretty decent, not pre-built, but pre-spec'd out ones. As long as it's decently balanced, it'll probably run anything okay for that kind of price. Um, are they pre-built? I thought they were pre-spec. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I go straight to Nerdphonic, but that's not to say everybody can DM Nerdphonic and have him come back with PC specs. You have to have the special hookup. So I don't know if he's got a list anywhere of stuff that he just generically recommends. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's what I would do. I would go and say to him. I mean, I usually say to him, this is what I, I don't usually give him a budget, which is why my PCs get more expensive every time. I tell him what I want it to do. He then tells me how much it will cost. And I then push it even further and spend even more because I'm a maniac. There's a thread on the SI forums for that kind of thing. Well, there you go. Lovely, lovely. Nerdphonic has a video on YouTube, does he? What a what a lovely man that boy is. We should find a link to that video so we can link to it every time someone comes in and asks that question. That would be quite a handy thing to be able to do. And send some people Matt's way. That can be our official way of thanking him for constantly fixing all of my kit have i seen the news from posh and bobby copping i haven't what's the news from posh and bobby copping i've just grabbed my phone and i'm googling bobby copping to see what's happened bobby copping bobby copping bobby copping bobby copping is a retired footballer what what's happened there I'm now reading the article. Bear with me. Why has he had to retire? No, my buttons are not working on my phone. Someone's just going to have to let me know. Cannot get on the... Uh, I can't get on anything. My phone's just completely locked up. After a head injury. My word. 
What sort of head injury? How has he done that? I can't get anything to load up on my phone. It's just stuck, not loading up. What, a head injury he's had in a match or what? Something needs to load up. Forced to retire because of a head injury. Medical advice carry on would be detrimental to his health. Sustained a head injury in February 2020. He was admitted to hospital for four days. He made a full recovery. He was on the bench for the EFL Trophy Clash with Cambridge in November. But within a week, suffered a relapse. Wow. So I'm guessing it's like the whole multiple concussion thing that footballers have, presumably. Yikes, that is rubbish. Because he was he was considered a very promising youngster at Posh. I hope he's well insured and he's not now kind of stuck there as a 19-year-old with no plan B. Fingers crossed he's um he gets a nice big insurance payout to set him up a little bit, because that is a rubbish age to have to retire from football for something so stupid and frustrating. Yikes. Posh have given him a job. Oh, we're a lovely football club. What's the job we've given him? Like I said, I can't get onto the articles properly. What job have we given him? Hopefully a proper job, like a youth team coach or something. Um, right. Let's play some football manager. You lot can tell me all about Bobby Copping as the evening goes on. Um, in the academy. Oh, we're a lovely football club. Round of applause. Round of applause for Peterborough United Football Club. Smashing. Right. We are trying to topple TNS. That is the goal for tonight's stream. Um, as you can see, it's not it's not going swimmingly. And um, this is season five of the save. We've been in the Welsh Premier League. This is our third season in the Welsh Premier League now. We've had two third place finishes. TNS have won the league both times. We started this season really, really well. As you can see, we were top for quite a long time. We actually had a 100% start to the season for a little while, um, but then we lost to Barry off East Enders and picked up a draw against Connors Key. And because TNS are just relentless, they've now just started winning every game. You can't, we can't afford to drop many points. We've only dropped five points all season. No, that's not true because we've had three draws now. We've only dropped five points recently. But TNS, like I say, relentless. We have got to play them twice more once we split into the Champions group. But we've played them twice in the first part of the season. We beat them and drew against them. So it's not even our games against TNS that have cost us. It's these silly little draws. Carnarthen, uh, Connors Key. There must be another draw in there somewhere. Oh, the draw against TNS as well. And the defeat against Barry. It's, it's not like we've had a run of bad form. There's just been the odd iffy result. But they just win everything. And it's very, very, very upsetting. So, fingers crossed, we can now uh, continue our newly found run of form against Bangor. We want to win the league and then run away. That's the plan. Win the league, run away. So, let's get the game against Bangor underway. Um, yeah, we'll just go straight with this team that presumably past Kev has already picked for us because he's a proper gentleman. And uh, let's hope we can start the stream off with a bang while I get caught back up with what's going on in the chat. Um, former Norwich lads, I believe we'll have some sort of plan B. We're quite good at education. Excellent. Um, speaking of posh youngsters, just managed to get Ricky J. Jones on loan in League 2 in my non-league save. Nice. Nobody came in for me. No, we've not had a single job offer. We've not even had an interview in this save yet. Yeah, did you know I support the posh women's team? Um, I didn't know that. No, I don't believe you've ever mentioned that before. Bobby's role in the academy is in business operations. Nice. I don't really know what that means, but it's good to see that we're looking after him. It's the it's the least we can do after breaking him, presumably. Defeat here will be past Kev's fault. Yes, it will be. It will be. Am I streaming until eleven today? No promises. We'll see. Um, I've got I've got the whole oh something my chicken mask has just fallen down. It just spontaneously fell off the windowsill. I've got to keep that ready for the showdown. Um, oh, what am I doing? Um, what was the question? Am I streaming till 11? Um, I'm not sure because I've got to be up at six again in the morning. So no promises that I'll uh, that I'll be up at 11 uh, up, up until 11. Um, if I start to get tired, I'll stop the stream. But we'll try and go as late as I can before a good old sleepy. Uh, but you know, these six o'clock starts every day. 11 o'clock finishes are always a little bit tricky, but we had no way to start any sooner today because, as mentioned, with the 
the carers who are coming in with Andy and they were here two till seven today so they only just left at seven o'clock and then we had our dinner then because I would have felt weird eating my pie and mash in front of in front of someone who was there um playing with Andy and just basically hanging out with Andy have I seen that there's a vegan butcher coming to Nottingham I haven't that sounds really cool um as and when we're actually able to travel over to Nottingham again or I guess we travel up to Nottingham now rather than over to Nottingham like we used to. Um, if we scoot up the M1 up to Nottingham, um, we'll definitely check them out. When is the next stream of showdown? Next weekend. I'm new to FM, can you tell me how to find regens in FM20? I mean, you don't... I mean, I don't specifically go looking for new gens. I would just get my scouts to go find players and some of them that come back on the scout reports will be new gens some will be old folk as in real people um i don't think there's any advantage necessarily in finding new gen players over over normal players over real players so just make sure your scouts are doing their thing and check your scouts scout reports regularly would be my idea what pie did i have i had the kevin pie from pie minister it's the Kevin, it's like a mushroom and quinoa vegan pie. It's um, good. Can we get past Zealand's opinion on TNS? Little Zealand, Little Zealand's busy. Little Zealand's desperately prepping for, for next week, I imagine. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, right, we've lost a player here. This isn't good. Just do this there you go this is how you, this is this is my new way of coping with going down to 10 men shenanigans i'm in the mood for shenanigans this evening this could all go wrong i do still have a code to you to buy fm it looks like shady's already sorted you out of it as well zealand is god mario kart racer needs a timeout we can't have people spouting absolute crazy nonsense in here unless you spelt dog wrong did you spell dog wrong Perhaps it's, a, perhaps it's a typo. Mods, don't actually time him out. I know what you like. like. You get a little bit over keen. There you go. My sexy formation has worked. Brilliant stuff. Zealand said earlier, you do a lot more prep and, and tactics than you like to let on. I mean, I literally, I literally made a video explaining what I do. I'm talking about how I spent three three days prepping for the last showdown. So I don't do more I don't do more prep than that, which is the amount that I let on. Once we're once it's showdown time, if people uh, if people haven't if people haven't actually listened to me telling them that's what I do, then that's their fault for not paying enough attention. So if he didn't realise how much I was doing. That feels like it's an error on his end because I've always been pretty open about the fact I do loads of prep. And I'm, I, I sit there analysing players and like um, current ability to price ratios and picking out the key attributes for the roles that I want to use. I know I don't really use attributes when I'm playing the single player game, but when it comes to the showdown, I am working my way through that database player by player. Making sure I get the exact squad that I want. Why do prep when why do prep when chat selects the players to get? I mean, Paul, yeah, but you're buying into the lowdown narrative there, aren't you? Because you know full well not only have the chat not picked the players since season one way back when. Um, this most recent one, I wasn't even letting you see my shortlist. I wasn't even showing the shortlist between picks. I was just, I was sat there on this, on my chat screen like this, or the showdown version of it, I guess. I was sat there on that screen, picking the players out and then coming back to you and saying, this is who I'm drafting. <laughs> uh, you've literally told them more than once how to win it and they still can't beat me because they can't swallow it. I mean, the ones that are listening are the ones who are going deep in it every time now. Tom and Clates have both listened and have taken it on board and are trying to replicate it. And they'll get... I mean, Tom's already won one when 
I, I, uh, when I eliminated myself as a tribute to Zealand, to show support to Zealand. Shady, don't give Smoothman gifted subs. He's a mod. He can pay for his own. This is not acceptable. We had a good idea of who you had in mind. Yeah, but you certainly weren't picking my players for me. Dimitri, thank you for the gifted sub. I do what I want. You're a monster, Shady. Dimitri94 gifted a tier one sub to I'm going to send Smoothin a bill for all the entertainment I've given him. He owes me money. All the entertainment he's had off of me and all of the... Uh, all of the, all of the, Smoothman's an internet celebrity because of me. Everyone knows Smoothman. I've made that boy. He's my Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh dear. I bet he loves that. Veggie Hot Dog. Thank you for the sub. I don't owe you any money. You owe me money for the coffee you stole. I've, uh, I've paid you back in clout, Smoothman. That's all you need off of me. Even though you and Smoothin haven't worked together in three and a half years, you still hassle him. He needs... To, I've got to keep him on his toes. It'll get complacent if I don't. Plus, he's just biding his time, ready for when I uh, hire a secretary and he comes to work for me. What other games could I beat Zealand in? All of the games. The Davies Coop. Thank you very much for the sub. I think I said your name right this time. I probably didn't, but I think I did. Um, I've never played Zealand at any other game, so I don't actually know if he's any good at any other games. I'm not very good at any other games, so in reality, I probably wouldn't beat him at anything else. And I've never seen Zealand play anything other than Football Manager, so no way of knowing, really. Right. Are we still top of the league? I know we went top of the league during that game. I don't know if we stayed there. Um, Dante Casanova. What a signing he's turning out to be. How many upset Arsenal fans have commented on the video today? Oh, it's not its not upset Arsenal fans. I swear there's a secret Discord, or maybe this is what goes on on the Lelujo Reddit that I never go on. There's a secret Discord, a secret group somewhere where everyone in the comments section gets together as the video is coming out. It says, right, lads, what? The Davy scoop. Oh, I'll never get it right. I'll never get it right. Um, but I think everyone gets together in a group and it's like, right, what really illogical, random thing should we all comment on Kev's video today just to make it look like he's wrong because so many of us are coming about, commenting about it. But if you take it in isolation, it's nonsense. Because for the last week, I've heard nothing but... Don't play soccer at left back. So you can't play soccer at left back. Why soccer at left back? So I've gone out and signed a left back. Ooh, Kev, Saka's your best left back. Ooh, Kev, why are you placing Saka at left back? I don't know if it's the same people, but oh my, oh my word. Oh my word. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> oh. I, I mean, if you're one of those people, you're doing it deliberately, aren't you? You are doing it to mess with my head. We're we watching Arsenal fan TV right now. We might be. You got it right three times in a row before. I'll make sure I'll put it, put it on the back of the home shirt I'm ordering. Excellent. I was in the anti sacker camp. I'm happy now. Maybe it is different people then. It could just be that it's different people. But obviously, I don't remember the names of everyone who comments every day. Um, I just see the comments coming in. So, for a week... It's probably not a week. It's since the transfer special. So, three or four days, it's been... Okay, if you've got to stop playing Saka at left-back. You've got to stop playing Saka at left-back. I replace him. And now, all it's been today is... Uh, Kev, you know Saka's got the highest average rating in the Premier League. Yeah, but... Also, we all agreed not to play him. Ah. Oh. Graham, thank you very much for the sub. Well, this is awkward. Now we'll need to delete the Reddit. You don't need to delete the Reddit. I still don't know how to use Reddit. I'm too old to go and figure Reddit out. So you're safe to plan it all on Reddit 
and I'll never see it. It's fine. I ain't going to start using Reddit at this stage. To be fair, Saka was the best player in the Premier League in the latest non extension video according to the ratings. Yeah, but he's not a left back. <laughs> he's not a left back. <laughs> I imagine you annoyed the Arsenal fans when you said they're not as big as, say, a Manchester team. I mean, if there's genuinely Arsenal fans out there who think they're as big as Manchester United, then they're buffoons, aren't they? First thing, I would have kept Saka in the team by pushing him up on the wing. Ahead of who? We've got two of the best wingers in the world in that Arsenal team. Saka's going to be fine as a rotation option out wide. The way we used Reese Nelson last year... Having Saka as a guy to come off the bench with 20 minutes to go when we're chasing a goal. Lovely. But he's never going to get in ahead of the two wingers that we've got who are much better than he is. But Reddit vids get loads of views and loads of views equals money. They only get loads of views if you know what you're doing. I mean, how I lost £150 before and after videos get loads of views. But they don't if you didn't actually lose the weight and don't know what's going on. My first ever Twitch sub to my favourite streamer. Thank you very much. What an honour. What a glorious honour. Saka being compared to Reese Nelson. He'll write a restraining order. Um, I wasn't comparing him to Reese Nelson. I was saying I would use him in the same way I used Nelson. This is the problem of your player evaluation. There is no problem with my player evaluation. You only consider star rating, which tells a very small part of ability. Form matters a lot more. I mean, absolute bobbins. Absolute bobbins. I'll just do this. I don't even need to say the words. Just tell me again how I'm not good at football manager. <laughs> oh, have I recorded the using installments video? I haven't. I need to get round to it at some point. Uh, Tarion uh, makes a good point. Uh, form is reflected in star rating. <laughs> yeah, I love. I'm. I'm just. Gonna start, I think I'll start wearing the crown at all times. Just start wearing the crown. Hold on. Let me just adjust my crown so I can hear you properly, telling me how I'm not good at football manager. I can't hear you over all these streamer showdown victories that I've got. Telling people how good you are at FM or conceding a goal is brilliant. But doing it whilst winning anyway. <laughs> you literally admitted you used attributes in the showdown 20 minutes ago. Yeah, because the showdown's hard. Playing against the AI is like getting in a spelling contest with an ape. It's not difficult, is it? That poll that um, Out of Context FM put out that everyone responded to. Um, where I was asking whether you want to see someone just winning loads or seeing someone struggle, I genuinely interpret that as do you enjoy watching someone just play the game as it is or faking losing? Because there's no, there is no way if you play this game every day, there is no way you're not winning everything all the time unless you're faking it. It's too easy. Thanks, Kev, for the sub for Viking Dan the other night. You're welcome. I'm trying to get him to shave into a Hulk Hogan-style moustache. Spelling comps are harder if you're dyslexic. They're still harder if you're an ape, though. So you'd still probably be... You, I mean, forget probably. You would still definitely be an ape. Anna's dyslexic, but she can sometimes spell some words. Apes can't spell any of them. Has Ben been... I, do, I don't know what's going on in terms. Is Ben losing in terms? I watched the first couple of episodes of Thames and I would say he's not faking, but he is uh, like he signed Manny, not because he thought Manny was good, because he wanted to put Manny on his thumbnail. So he's he's doing he's doing a lot of stuff like that, which is fair enough. He's I think he would openly admit he's not trying to play the game optimally, or at least he wasn't in those first couple of episodes I was watching. He's uh, he's making an entertainment series.
being good at games mattered. Many a true nerd wouldn't be a massive channel. Um, Anna watches him all the time, and I would counter that by saying he's actually pre pretty good. The, the game, it's like Fallout and stuff like that. The fact he does a uh, he does that whole um, playing through Fallout without dying thing or without respawning stuff. I mean, I couldn't play through ten minutes of Fallout without dying because I'm incompetent. Stuck in the Vanorama South, only watch the recap bit. Who is what? We talked about Ben still. First, you sent us over to yesterday. Couldn't watch for long. Don't tell him I said. Who did I send you over to yesterday? Was it Clates yesterday? Clates is lovely. I really don't think you understand just how difficult managing outside Europe is. We're not talking about managing outside of Europe. Playing the game seriously in his Do It Better series proves he can play FM properly. Yeah, exactly. Little Clates. Yeah, Little Clates insisted we went to see Big Clates. I need to arrange all my fugglers so that I have a little version of everybody that I can just call on when needed. I'll have to start making them. I'm not going to make them. I'll have to start buying them little costumes so they can dress up like the person they're supposed to be. Oh, that's not good. We've lost Jack Swan. Can't he? I mean, with a broken arm, Eric Cantona played for it. I, every time I think of Eric Cantona, I think of him with a cast on his arm. Jamie Vardy played with a cast on his arm for ages as well, didn't he? Why does he need to be out with a broken arm? Oh, it literally says there the thing that I'm talking about. Play through injury will wear protective equipment for two to three months at an estimated medical cost of 1.9k in order to take part in light training and matches. Yeah, we'll do that. So, yeah. We just want to keep him. Why would we want to lose him for all that time when we could just stick him, on, stick him wearing a sling? Be interesting to see if um, selection advice selects him still, or if I have to remember to put him in. So, someone considered me the best FM player in the world. Any, any advice for a challenge? What? Selection advice won't select him. I'll just stick him on the bench myself. We don't necessarily need to start him. Um, we can give. Ugh, and Taylor Crossdale some starts, but we can have we can have Swan there ready to come on if we need him. With his, I hope he plays in a sling and not just <laughs> it just says protective equipment. I really hope that means a sling. I want to see him wear a sling. Will he be carrying a yellow injury? Um, it's just like that. So, does that keep him fully fit, or or what is the situation? So, do we get to see... Oh, yeah, overall physical condition. Yeah, so he's fine. He's just got a broken arm. Get each player in the team to sign the cast in games he's involved in. That's a very good idea. I mean, I think it's reasonable for him not, to not to not expect him to start loads of games, but we want to be able to, we want to have him there if we need him. I think that's acceptable. Right, what's this pre-recruitment meeting contract advice? We don't really want to be offering contracts at this time of year. Hello, recruitment meeting. Is it? It's time for another. Rec We're always doing recruitment meetings. Yes, let's see what's available. We can't really afford to buy anybody, so just free transfers, please. I mean, none of these... Uh, there you go, there's a free transfer. We signed him somewhere at some point. Christian Norton and Jeremy McKendy. Didn't we have McKendy in this save? I've certainly had McKendy recently in some save somewhere. Not sure when, where, why or how. 
but I know it's a name that comes up quite regularly. Mackenzie was Kettering. Okay. Wasn't he at home on Twitch last year as well? I think we had him two years in a row. Genuinely watching F watched an FM Scout video yesterday where some clown reckoned he'd won the championship with a team of keepers. Maybe he, maybe he had. Has someone found a really overpowered tactic? If so, time for me to get that downloaded. That'll come in handy. If we can sign a couple of decent strikers here, we don't need to actually place one. We've got money to do it. Do I like recruitment meetings? Yes, I think they're cool. Dun, 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 dun. We've just signed a lot of good players on trial. Mrrr. We don't play the diamond anymore. Right, I think it makes sense to bring McKendy in. Because Swan's injured. But he doesn't necessarily need to be our first choice, although he could play on the left-hand side of midfield as well. There's some decent defender options. Well, I think we could probably get a few of these. Let's try McKendy. I just want to get all my old boys back in at some point. Oh, God, he wants a lot of money. We're not signing him, are we? That's a stupendous amount of money. Yeah, just a straight no from Jeremy McKendy. Charming. Ben Barkley is another one who... Oh, he's former Cambridge. Nope, can't sign him. Can't sign... He's infected. Danny Amos. Looks really pleased with himself. Is he going to be cheap? Affordable. Not cheap. There you go. We can get him in. And then Aaron Lewis. He would be a backup. He's not going to get in ahead of Dante Casanova. So he needs to be cheap. We are definitely improving the quality of players we're attracting to the club. All right, let's just dig our heels in at 300. And see if he's interested. No, that's fine. We didn't need him. We'll be fine. And then Ryan Sanford, bit too old for a backup. That's just the one that we're actually going to try and sign, isn't it? So anyone else find the contract demands of players are much higher whilst on trial but go back down when being a free agent? They sometimes are. It does tend to vary from player to player. I go for slam dunk on the back of my home shirt do i go for seven the number he wore in non-league or 19 the number he has now i'd go for the number when he was a regular starter i've noticed after multiple negotiations their demands go down yeah i think it's more a case of when they're first available on a free or when you first show interest, they try and get as much money as they can. And then over time, if no one else comes in for them and if you are kind of like, oh, I'm not really that bothered. If you make it look like you have to play hard to get. Uh, if I don't really want, if they don't really want me, I kind of need the money. It's a supply and demand thing. If you make it look like you really, really want them, then they'll ask for more money. So I imagine, and I haven't tested this, I imagine when they come in on trial like that, they probably ask for more money on day one of the trial than day seven. Because if you've got them in on trial and immediately offer them a contract, they're like, oh, he really wants me. Whereas if you leave it until the day they're leaving and then reluctantly offer them a trial as a rotation player, they'll probably want less money. Which I imagine is pretty accurate to how it is in real life. Has this match just been called off? I don't know why it's been called off. There we go. That's why. Because of a waterlogged pitch. Yeah, as someone... As Tarion says, it can, it can completely backfire, though. Because if you... Uh, if you play hard to get with them and there's other clubs involved... 
you could end up missing out on them entirely. So you have to you have to judge it according to how how much they seem wanted by other clubs. I'm already yawning and it's only half past eight. This does not bode well for a late stream. Ah oh dear. Why oh, have you called Andy Reid the little fat man? Um, because he's a little fat man. That's why. Little fat man from Forest. That's what we called him the whole time he was here. And just like the other turncoats, he refused to come back on loan this year. National League North South has been null and voided, votes just in. That is so ridiculous. That makes a complete mockery. They've, they have literally done the exact same dumb thing they did this time last year. It's so infuriating. So that's two seasons just written off. When if they'd have just done what good old Kev told them to do last year, there was no reason to rush to null and void the season last year. They could have just put everything on hold, come back and finished last season in like October, November this year when they were able to play football. They could have finished last season and had one complete season rather than two stupid half seasons that are just ruining clubs. Absolutely ridiculous. If I was a if I was a club in that league, I would genuinely be taking legal advice to um, to take legal action against the the league because they've put the they've put the likelihood of these clubs surviving in serious jeopardy with absolutely ridiculous decision making that had no sense and basis in reality. There was obviously a right thing to do, and they didn't do it. And now they've done a dumb thing two years in a row, which is actively harmful. So stupid. It's the clubs that have voted for it. Yeah, the clubs that can't afford to play have voted for it because they were lied to. If you remember because um, Kettering have been tweeting about this quite a lot. At the start of the season, they were told that they would be given money for playing behind closed doors. They would be given grants to keep the clubs afloat. And then the goalposts were moved by the league partway through the season um, when they were told, OK, you're not getting grants anymore. You can now take loans. We'll sort loans for you. Well, what good are loans? You have to, play lo you have to pay loans back. So they started a season under false pretenses because they were told that for as long as fans weren't, weren't going to be in the ground, they would be financially compensated for that so they wouldn't lose out so on good faith they signed players and prepared for a new season even though last season had been voided off they signed players they prepared for the season as usual um and then midway through the season the goalposts are moved it's utterly unacceptable it is ridiculous and i mean it's not like we didn't see it coming either that's the most frustrating thing ridiculous Tell us how you really feel. I'm just, I like non-league football and I'm furious about how badly it's run. So stupid. They should have decided what they were going to do before the season, but they just started the season without an actual plan in place in case 2020 happened again. They should have just finished last season. But I still have, I've still never been given a good reason why the seasons had to be finished why we had to draw a line under last season and then go start the seasons again when we still weren't allowed fans in there has been enough football played in the last year and a half to complete one season so why didn't they do that <sighs> so stupid. How will this affect my decision for the next non league legend? Well, it depends what dumb decisions they take next. I don't know. Are they going to... Is that it? Promotions and relegations are done? I mean, I've not seen the story. Are promotions and relegations abandoned for the year as well? Or are they going to come up with some stupid rule to decide who gets promoted and who doesn't? So... I guess if things are left as they are, I'd have to have a look to see who the nearest club to me is, as usual.
They're still discussing about promotion relegation between the National and the North and South. Ah. Uh, so, so stupid. National League is carrying on. National League North and South is abandoned. Oh, my word. When all this is done and things are back to normal, there needs to be an investigation into why it's gone this badly wrong because it's not like it was impossible to see this outcome coming. If you go back and find stream replays from 10, 11 months ago, whenever football was originally put on hold, and as soon as people started saying, "Oh, well, we've got, we've got to fi got to finish the season," got to, you know, once once we're in May, June time, you just do. There has to be an outcome. We have to. It all has to be. Why? Why can't you just postpone it and come back to it? Oh no, we have to start a new season. Why? Just why? Why do you have to start a new season? Why can't you just finish the one you've just played? Ah. Seven clubs in the National League might refuse to play any more games this year. And to be fair, if they can't afford to do it, then they should refuse to play. And it's not their fault. They were promised grants and the goalposts have been moved and it's become loans. How are they supposed to pay back loans? They have no income at the moment. They're being asked to, play, to put on football matches and pay players when they have no money coming in. And they're being told, but don't worry, you can borrow money and just pay for it later. Well... How? They're not going to get... It's not like the money from the fans coming to these matches is, is coming later and it'll all be all right in the end. This money isn't there anymore. Oh, dear. No, that's not an impression of Boris Johnson. I don't think he made this decision. Oh dear, what a mess. What a mess. Oh dearie me. I kind of want to go and read about it now and find out. I'd love to, I would love to hear their justification for it. For not obviously the decision don't misinterpret me the decision to actually abandon it is probably the right decision for a lot a lot of clubs because they can't afford to play so don't force them to play that's completely reasonable i get that it's the fact that we've ended up here from where we were and we didn't need to reach this point that's what's so stupid zedman thank you very much for the sub Is this a long rant so I can bring back the Kev Told You So shirts? They've never gone away. There you go. Old one arm, the one arm swan has just grabbed himself a goal. I don't think I've ever heard you this grumpy, Kev. Well, you know, I don't often talk about real football because at most levels, I don't care. But non-league football, I do care because non-league football is brilliant. That's where the best people are. Some of the nicest people I've ever met have been involved in non-league football and they don't deserve to be shafted like this by a bunch of morons who didn't think things through. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, there's never been such a cause for grumpiness. Exactly, I'm gener generally a pretty chilled out chap most things like water off a duck's back but you know the thing that frustrates me most is i was sat here a year ago saying when so many people were saying oh no you've got a you've got to finish this season just draw a line under it be ready to come back in september for the new season that's what's best and i was screaming then but what if you can't come back until october what if you don't get to come back at all? What if you come back and then have to go into lockdown again? What if we can't play a full season next year? And it wasn't like people weren't thinking it and weren't saying it. And the answer was always just, ah, nah, we won't worry about that. It'll be fine. 
People should listen to Kev. I should be the one making these decisions, not morons. <laughs> Uh, problem will be those clubs that were having a great season and not going now, not going anywhere. Uh, I mean, that's to be honest, the actual results on the pitch at the moment are the least of the worries. There's going to be clubs going out of business because of this. Um, but there would have been clubs going out of business if they'd have carried on playing as well, because the moment they moved the goalposts and decided it was going to be loans, not grants, that's the moment where it was like, okay, yeah, you've just ruined this now. The really cynical part of me can't help but look at it and think, and this is cynical, and I'm not suggesting this is what's happening, but my brain can't avoid going here. The big clubs, the the authorities, you know, the the the, the where the money is, the power brokers in football, they look at the American sports system and think, oh, that's nice, isn't it? The rich stay rich. The poor, who cares? And I, ca I can't help but cynically think that it's almost been engineered to trim off some of these annoying little non-league clubs who annoyingly have fans. And this is an opportunity to restructure the whole thing. And off the back of this, because so many clubs are going to go out of business, they're finally going to get their ridiculous suggestions they've made in recent years, like putting Premier League reserve teams in League 3 and abandoning the National League in the North and South. And the lower leagues just turn into Premier League reserve leagues. And it feels like scumbags have seen an opportunity to get their own way that they never would have got previously because those clubs were never just going to roll over and give up. But there's an opportunity to bankrupt them and make it look like it wasn't your doing. It was just, oh, it's just circumstances, you know, COVID. It's just one of those things. There was always going to be some clubs that couldn't survive it, couldn't really be helped. Well, it could have been helped if you'd have managed it properly. <sighs> Ugh. Right, we need to talk about something else now because I'm cross. I'm genuinely cross. <sighs> oh, yeah, bigger clubs could have absolutely helped out the smaller clubs. Kev, the football socialist. It's not even that. It's just... It's football, isn't it? When did it all become about money? It's why I don't it's why I don't watch the Premier League, because football's just about money. And there's gonna be so many good clubs run by good people that go out of business because the games just become about money, and that's not what it was all about. <sighs> Might be wrong, but what you're saying is blame the FA. Just blame everyone who's involved in the decision-making process. I don't even know who is the authority that controls non-league football. Is it the FA? Is the National League a separate entity? I don't really know the structure of it. But if in three years' time, we've got Chelsea under-23s beating Posh in a league game, then I think I'm just done with football completely at that point. It's been pushing me away for a long time. But at that point, I'm just... I'm done. I am done. Blame it all on Saka. Yeah, exactly. If he'd have been any good at left back, none of this would have happened. Oh, dear me. So, the same happened in Scotland, Kev. Clubs just wanted the sky money, and when it all came crashing down, clubs almost went bust like Motherwell. Yeah. B teams all over European lower leagues, to be fair. Exactly. And that's what was special about the English lower leagues. 
That's why the English lower leagues get much higher attendances than any other lower leagues anywhere else in the world. That's why the English lower leagues are full of clubs that the local communities genuinely love. Because it's not just full of big club B teams and it's not just about youth development and it's not played in front of nine people because nobody cares. The English lower leagues were football. <laughs> Kev, don't be sad. Your team are five up with 30 minutes played. Yeah, but it's a cup game here. It's a load of trash, isn't it? Doesn't matter. Oh. I need to turn this ship around. Exactly. You say, you say it's fine having B teams in the lower leagues. I say, do we look Spanish to you? Rah! <laughs> oh, goodness. Goodness me. Brr. The English lower league were, are, and always will be football. Not if they don't exist, they won't be. I mean, if the if the lower leagues is just where Manchester City's under twenty threes play and win every year but can't get promoted, because that would be the really annoying thing. You, they'll they'll say, oh, it's fine because we won't let them get beyond League One. We'll cap them at League One so it doesn't become ridiculous. Yeah, okay, that stops the Premier League becoming ridiculous. But what happens when the top eight in League One every year is the same eight under-23 teams who can't get promoted and you've then got teams getting promoted as champions who finish 10th in League One? How are they going to get on in the championship? I'll give you a clue. They are not going to get on very well. And before too long, the conversation is then, well, these teams that come up into the championship always get relegated straight back down. It can't be because they're playing against these Premier League teams week in week out and they uh, they don't really get any experience of winning it can't be that it must just be that the the gap is too big we should probably do away with this promotion and relegation stuff and just take the top 30 or 40 clubs separate them off and then the rest of it can all just be a feeder system for that oh So it's safe to say this might be the last time we get to play as some of these teams in FM, probably. Oh, dear. Breathe. I'm seeing the game that I loved being ruined in real time. I don't want to breathe. It's a horrible, dystopian footballing future that is taking a massive step closer to reality based on what's happened over the last couple of days. Oh, but at least at least the NASA rovers on Mars though. Maybe we can start a football league there. And then we can separate the top six to the European Super League. Better for domestic teams that can't compete anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> In the meantime, we're seven one up. It's a cup game, it doesn't matter. In Germany, third league, fourth place got the chance to go up because Bayern's second team walked the league. Uh the players dropping down to play regular football would stop doing it as they wouldn't need to leave their B team. This would ruin the lower leagues who need these players. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they found the National League board on Mars. They're not on this planet anyway. No. That's the, oh, I don't know. I feel like I need to... I mean, I'm, I'm not a football channel, am I? That's the thing. Can I get away with doing a rant on this as a YouTube video? But genuinely feel like as the non-league guy i should be speaking out standing up for my standing up for my people rabble rousing a little bit just to make sure people are aware of what's going on because that's the thing if you're only a premier league football fan it's very easy for this kind of news to just pass you by or not really understand the significance it can have oh, okay the national league north and south postponed for the year probably for the best it means they're not going to get sick now and not really understand the consequences that it can have but the knock-on effects from this can be completely disastrous. As a Hartlepool fan was worried about today's vote, this is the best team we've had in 10 years and to have had the season wiped would have been gutting. All because the FA only cares about the big teams, exactly. Uh... 
What did I have for tea? I had uh, Pie Minister Kevin Pie. Beautiful stuff. I, I, had, I had a vegan pie, but then had um, some... Because you have to go to Waitrose around here to get the pies. They only sell them at Waitrose. So when I go to Waitrose, I get fancy veg. So we had um, we had I had a vegan pie, but then peas, leeks, and pancetta as the veg that we had with it, because it looked really nice. So you know, I managed to save a cow with the pie, but did slaughter a pig to make my peas taste better. So you know, you got to take the rough with a smooth sometimes. Have I tried the MS No Chicken Kiev? I don't think I have. The MS near me is just a little petrol station MS, so it doesn't have a lot of options in there. Um, oh, look, we're playing Keth in Druids twice, once home, once away. Fixtures are broken. Um, the people of Keth in Druids are looking at how we just de destroyed the other Keth in team, thinking this isn't good. Have I tried? I've just answered that question. Um, for me, football in England should stay as it is. Yeah, but it's not how it works, is it? I'm I'm a Premier League football fan, but love lower league football. It's crucial we keep clubs and leagues like these, especially as they're often community clubs. Exactly. The Kevin Druids. <laughs> if that was true, they'd roll over and let me beat them. I prefer that one pig dying will make tons of beans taste better. That's a good point, actually. That's a very good point. I'm, I'm helping people eat leeks. It's actually said Kevin Druids. Is it really? That's amazing. Why don't I support that? Why have I never done a save as the Kevin Druids? You're telling me there's a team called Kevin Druids. No one said to me, Kev, do a save with the team that's you as a Druid. Think of the costumes that I could have as part of that. What am I looking to be changed in FM22? Um... I'd like that thing I was talking about, about tackles in today's, one of today's videos sorted. Just the the bit where you tackle a player, but then lose the ball anyway. And it seems to happen all the time. I'd like him to fix that. I'd like him to fix it so that throw-ins and stuff aren't as overpowered as they are. Um, I don't know what else really. I'm sure they'll come up with something. Am I still trying to get a move away from Hlanetli? Uh, not mid-season. I'll, I'll look for jobs again in the summer. But now we're looking to win the league this year. Undertaker cosplay for Kev. Yeah. Costumes would be cool, but the league would get boring quick. I mean, it's the league we're playing in now. And this hasn't got boring. I'm really enjoying playing in Wales. I'm not that bothered if I get another job somewhere else. I I'm pretty happy playing in Wales. Yeah, um, AI, the the opponent AI and stuff needs upgrading as well in FM in terms of transfers and stuff like um, game management. The game management AI seems very odd sometimes. We noticed it a lot in the Leicester save where you'd, be two, you'd have two-legged Champions League ties where your opponents would be behind the entire tie and never, never once try and attack and come at you. It's just odd. Just got back from PC shopping. How's the table? Um, what, this table? It's good. Um, we are top of the league, though. Any thoughts on exploding barbed wire? Yeah. <sighs> Do I have to rant again? <laughs> um, I haven't even watched Dynamite because I saw that on Twitter this morning and I was just like, oh, God, please. We're not heading in this direction, are we? I've loved everything about AEW up to this point. But I do not need to watch an exploding barbed wire match. Hashtag free little Clates. Clates! Where's little Clates? Here he is. Little Clates, big Clates is here. Are you happy about looking at him smiling? Oh, little Clates, you rascal. There we go. Yes, you do need to watch it. I really don't need to watch it. It might be the first of their pay-per-views I don't buy. Because I don't want to see an exploding barbed wire match. Ever. Let's 
Certainly a way to write out Moxie for his paternity leave. I assumed it would be a way to write out Moxie for the G1 rather than for paternity leave. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's going to go on paternity leave. I'd expect to see him show up in the G1 instead. Do I prefer AEW, WWE? Definitely AEW. And when I say I'm done with it, I'm not. I'll watch Dynamite tomorrow. I've ordered all of my um, Series 5 figures today. They went on Ringside Collectibles this afternoon, so I've put my pre-order in for them. So I'm, uh, I'm definitely still... I'll still buy the pay-per-view. I love AEW. It's brilliant. But that just didn't motivate me to watch the show this morning. New Japan or AEW? Um, AEW, probably. New Japan, I only really watch the big shows. New Japan, trying to watch consistently is pretty dull. They just do the same matches all the time. It's just like multi-man tag matches and constant bullet club run-ins. Trying to watch it week to week is really dry and boring. The big events are great. But AEW is better on a week to week basis. Do I still watch WWE? Nope. Haven't even watched the NXT TakeOver from the weekend. You can just watch it for free on Watch Wrestling. I don't steal content though. I'm a content creator. I can't steal content. Best wrestler on the mic. Um, who gives a really good promo? MJF, probably. These days. I think you struggle to look past MJF. AEW wasn't great last night, besides the Young Bucks versus Santana. Yeah, I do want to see that match, actually. I like Santana and Ortiz a lot. What's my favourite match? Um, I don't know. Probably, I think you struggled to look past some of the recent Young Bucks matches in AEW. I know I'm sounding really AEW biased, but Young Bucks versus Omega in Hangman was one of the best matches I've ever seen. I, I really like tag team wrestling. The Young Bucks against um, FTR was great. I'm a, I'm a, I like a tag team match. Um, we forgot to put the swan on the bench for this game because I was distracted. What made me get into wrestling? Um, a WWF sticker album that I got on a day out in Hunstanton when I was about seven, six or seven. We went to Hunstanton. There's this big warehouse market style shop right near the beach in Hunstanton that sells loads of old tat um, and we were able to get the WWF sticker album plus a load of stickers reasonably cheap and we just drove home from Hunstanton putting stickers in this sticker book I remember getting really excited when I got Tugboat <laughs> having never really watched any wrestling and from then on I just my uncle used to tape it for us and we'd watch it Right, no more wrestling. We talked about wrestling too much last night. People will stop watching if we just talk about wrestling all the time. Oh, 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 we, oh we've got a penalty. There's a chance for Dante Casanova. Thoughts on Repo Man. That's, we see that the guy was the Brooklyn Brawler as well. And he played like four different characters. He's a real player. Yeah, Dante Casanova is, yeah. And he's brilliant. He's my hero. Ah, uh, we just lost a player again. Let's drop down to positive. Because we're down to 10 men and there's a minute left. And it wasn't enough. It still wasn't enough. Go back to attacking. Ah! Have I watched any of the hashtag documentary series? No. I am. Um, I'm not afraid to admit I don't 
not 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 at all interested. Don't care. <laughs> uh, does that make me a bad person? Does Kev watch any trashy reality shows? No, I don't. See, that's the kind of result that it's going to cost us the title because TNS won't do that kind of thing. Yeah, we have Bashtag United around here with Spencer Bowen, our director of football. None of this hashtag nonsense. We don't want fake Bashtag. All about Bashtag. No Hashtag United series this year then. No. Oh, God, can you imagine how unbearable the comments would be on that? bad enough managing Arsenal can you imagine managing them and the amount of nonsense I'd get on YouTube I'd get views if you if you'll know I'm feeling a bit skint and a bit hard up if I ever do a hashtag United save on YouTube because it'll get more views than any series I've ever done before it'd be super popular but it would probably break me having to read the comments every day How's the lighting situation coming along? It's broken. I need to buy a new one. I haven't really looked into it yet. Never read the comments. But then I would be a bad YouTuber. Only bad YouTubers don't read the comments. Turn comments off. Then I might as well just make the videos and rather than uploading them onto YouTube, just leave them on my hard drive and they'd get just about the same amount of views. There's no point uploading a video with no comments. There'd be nothing to drive the algorithm. Do I have any wrestling Funko Pops? Yes. But we're not talking about wrestling anymore. But yes, I do. Any updates on the new chair? No, it's looking worryingly like I might have to buy one. Imagine the views, but the comments you'd get if you were managing Rangers or Celtic. Um, see, that's a slightly different scenario to hashtag because the comments would be absolute dross, but I don't think it would get as many views as like managing someone like Arsenal. When does the KFC chair arrive? I do not ever want a KFC chair. Thank you, KFC. I love you. Your skins are great. You sent me a lovely hat. If you try and give me a chair, I will be very cross with you because I do not want it. Thank you. Football Girl 19, thank you very much for the serve. Da, 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 da. Oh, we're moving mentoring groups around. Let's just check that we actually have proper, properly set up mentoring groups. People are so weird with the Arsenal save. I mean, people are nuts. I'm no Arsenal fan, but it's not going to stop me watching the content. The really mad thing is with the Arsenal stuff, I've never had this quite, this amount of daily views at this stage of a series before. Um, if I look back at like yesterday's Arsenal video, so we're, what, 27, 29 hours after it came out? My phone is just not loading anything at the moment. I don't know why. I think I need to restart my phone. But yesterday's video, so it's been out just over a day. It's already had 13,000 views. And I've never, ever been in five figures for views beyond like an episode 15 of a series before. So to be this far into that series i mean we're about 18 80 or 90 episodes into non to legend and we're still getting fifteen thousand views an episode so people are moaning like hell about it but twice as many people as ever before are watching it so i don't it's it, it, it does mess with the brain a little bit it's like if i only read the comments and didn't look at the numbers I would be convinced everyone hated the series because the comments are always negative. Like 80% of the comments are negative at all times. But then I look at the numbers and I'm like, well, this is unquestionably twice as popular as anything I've ever done on YouTube before. And there's a disconnect there that makes my eyes hurt. <laughs> I wonder you're the richest FM content creator. Ben gets more views than me. I might be the richest. I'm not the highest paid. 
and I'm the richest because I'm the smartest, not because I earn more. What series am I doing after Non-Eats Legend? There's a couple that I've got planned. I'm not sure which one we'll do first. They'll be born in the USA, and I'm doing a building a nation in Sweden. If you're looking good tonight, how do you maintain your dashing good looks? Creams. All sorts of creams. You can tell they're Arsenal haters and not fans because they don't call you blood fam. God. <laughs> when are the home shirts available? Three days ago. Have we got a link for the chat yet? For the shirts? They were announced. I think it was in today's home video. The shirts were announced. Sweden are already an established nation. Yeah, Swedish clubs regularly win the Champions League. And Sweden have won the World Cup loads of times. <laughs> Isn't that what Jack's doing? I genuinely have no idea what Jack's doing. He's doing that on YouTube, is he? We're talking about YouTube, I think, aren't we? They got to the finals in 1958, if that counts. Oh, well, in that case. In that case, let's not bother. I mean, we might not do that one. Born in the USA is definitely happening. The only reason I talk about Sweden is because I got sent that shirt, and I like the shirt, and I want to put it to good use. Magvest, thank you very much for the sub. Jack's doing Sweden on Twitch. That's no reason for me to not do Sweden on YouTube. I mean, we both we're both doing England on YouTube, and no one's upset about that. So I think we'll be all right, both doing the same thing. If it comes down to it, and if he doesn't like it, he can get out of my way <laughs> because I don't mind it. Kev, big news for you. I became a first-time dad on Monday. Congratulations. Wonderful stuff. Jack doing Sweden. Matt doing Norway. So you've got the choice of Denmark or Ireland. I've got the choice of anywhere I damn well please. And if they don't like it, they can get out of my way. I'm Kevy five times. <laughs> Plus, I'm talking about doing it on YouTube, not on Twitch. So it's not really related anyway. It'll be on YouTube, so there'll be loads of people watching it. For example. <laughs> oh, the swan. The one-armed swan. What a guy. We might have to change his name to the one-armed swan. He only needs one arm. I want to see you try and figure out the MLS. You say that, you don't. You'd want to see me. That would be amusing to watch as a one-off video. But to do an entire 50 or 60 episode series of me trying to work out the MLS, the joke gets old fast, I think. I'll rebuild a country even if someone else is already at it. It's the most British position, to be fair. <laughs> That's a good point. Right, how are we doing in the league off the back of this? MLS is fun for about 10 minutes as soon as you start dealing with the injury lists and all that rubbish. Ugh, yeah, exactly. When I do Born in the USA, it won't be in the MLS. It will be a US database with promotions and relegations. I.e. we'll fix it and make it fun. Make it work like real football. And we are still top of the league, boys and girls. This is uh, this is going really rather well. Can we change? Have we got enough characters to change that to the spelling of one? Because I don't like to have numbers in a name. The one-armed swan. There you go. Two matches left until it splits into the champions group and the loser group. 
So we then have to play everyone else in the top six twice more. TNS are after Colonel Sanders, the libero. They're going to have to give us a lot of money to drag him away from us. Will they be in Europe like I talked about? I'm not sure. I haven't got that far in the planning of it yet. But I think there needs to be something beyond just winning. I don't know. I guess if it's if it's like if it's like a six or seven tier system, then the goal could be just to win the top tier and be the champions of America. Especially if we stick Canada and Mexico in there as well and make it like a North American league, which we might have to do just to have enough clubs for a seven tier system or eight tier system, whatever we do. But if we do fewer tiers, but put the winners into the Champions League, as in the European Champions League, that's another option. I don't know. I've got to work out exactly how I want to do it. Of course it's Canadia. They're Canadian. So how is it not Canadia? It's like with um, Hulgary. <laughs> no, Bulgari and Hungary in, in Europe. Exactly. There'll be over 400 teams in the US database. That works for me. Would be the champions of the world if it's an American competition. That's a good point. <laughs> Redo the whole American league system. Don't have any uh, continental competition, but call the winner of it the world champions. I like it. Pretty sure Jack did a YouTube series a couple of years back where he created a Jamaican club that featured in the Nassau. I might be wrong. What on earth is a Nassau? There's a level 10 USA database, so that could be fun. Well, I will, might have to have a word with whoever made that and see if we can have an amended version of it and massively test it and fix it. Not fix it, but make sure it's completely airtight not going to be broken and make sure born are in it imagine the san jose earthquakes winning the champions league uh, i mean <laughs> we were talking about it 20 minutes ago it's probably where football's going once we've got rid of all these pesky lower league teams, we can get the Americans in. Come on, you like playing your... You like playing your Nuffle at Wembley? Come and play in the Premier League as well. Port Bourne was going to be LAFC. Oh, that was five or six iterations of the plan ago. We've The plan has been changed many times since then. Many, many, many times. As soon as we realised there was a born in America. What do I think of the 200 new emojis coming out this week? Out next week? I don't understand what that means. What? You, I, I don't understand. I don't think I've ever used an emoji, so I'm probably not the person to ask. Not only do I not use emojis myself, I refuse to respond when emojis are used at me. So Anna and the kids are fully aware that if the, the, a way to guarantee I won't read a text message is to include an emoji in it. I just I have some standards and I'm not reading emojis. You can't be bothered to write, then you don't, haven't earned my time in reading what you're trying to communicate to me. If you want me to make the effort to read your message, make the effort to write it, you lazy toad. Be careful, what if it's an emergency? What emoji could you use to put across an emergency? <laughs> If, if they sent me a picture of the fire emoji to tell me their house was on fire. My word. A smiley's different to emojis. Not in my world. I ignore them as well. Never used one. 
Never will use one. Can't cope with them. I'm not a boomer. I'm a millennial. But I'm an old millennial. I don't mind Twitch emotes. They're different. Emojis and emotes are different, aren't they? Oh, can we deal with this lot mods? Thank you. Looking forward to your 10,000 where they're saying why emojis and emotes are different. My understanding is emojis are the thing that's um, within Unicode. Is it Unicode that emojis are in? And um, so they can be used universally across like text messaging and emails and stuff like that. Whereas emotes are just dumb things that they have on places like Twitch that aren't represented by characters or keystrokes. You don't need 10,000 words. You just need like a slightly larger than normal brain. There you go. Confirmation emojis are in Unicode. I thought they were. Yes, I am a millennial. Uh, millennials start in 1980, I think, and I was born in 82. I agree we should remove the letter Q. Get rid of that with the emojis. The letter Q has never been useful. Like, come up with Qatar. You could just spell that with a K and you'd say it exactly the same way. DJ G Lover, thank you for the sub. Any letter that only works with another letter on, alongside it, like Q needing a U, spin it off. Don't need them both. What's my favourite letter? K for Kevy five times. Shags, thank you very much for the sub. Do I stay in a queue or a line? I, I, I mean, don't you know who I am? I just get ushered through to the front. I wave my pass and get put through to the front. Why am I waiting? I'm Kevy five times. QPR are getting renamed. Well, they can just be KPR. That's interesting. Another stream I did, did the letters of the alphabet list, tier list. I'd be curious to compare yours and his. I mean, we could maybe do one at some point. Millennials ended in 94, then it's Zoomers like me. We have a much cooler name. Yeah, but you're all losers, aren't you? <laughs> oh, you don't remember life without the internet, without phones. You've never lived. If you had to wait, would you wait in line or online? Uh, neither, because I'm not American. I'd wait in a queue. Inter Milan are in real trouble financially, so if they get relegated to Serie D, that would be a good save. Would it, though? Or would it just be a save of three consecutive promotions and then back in the Champions League? I'm not sure I agree that's a good save. I was born in 95, and I definitely remember not having internet and actually going out to play with friends. How? I got my first phone in 98. I got my first computer with the internet in 98. Uh, we're winning football matches, by the way. I'm trying not to focus on it because usually we play better when I'm not really paying attention. But we are five points clear at the top of the league currently. The only problem is we've been rubbish after the split. Both seasons we've been in the top flight. 
You had your first computer in 98. Did you avoid the dreaded Windows 95? No, I had Windows 95. We had a computer. We had the fir our first computer with a modem. In fact, I had a Dreamcast. So it might have been 99, actually. I, the first thing I had that I could go online with was a Dreamcast. And then shortly after, I turned 18. So it would have been in 2000. I went to PC World and um, bought a PC on finance. Real solid financial decision making from a newly turned 18 year old. Just walked into PC World, bought their most expensive PC and paid for it monthly. Paying for that for four years. Why they lent me that money at that age? Irresponsible, early 2000s finance nonsense. But I had a good PC and I was happy. People are having problems with running FM21 with a vast, just so everyone... Okay, fair enough. I've had an Amazon account since 99. Wow. Well done paying it off. I mean, to be fair, if I hadn't have paid back a computer finance agreement from the year 2000, 21 years later, um, I think there would be a bit of a problem there. Amazon tells you how long you've been on Amazon for, doesn't it? I think. I think I've. I think my Amazon account's from like two thousand and four, two thousand five ish. Surely nobody misses the dial-up tone. I think some people get nostalgic about it. How would you do Nonlinks Legend in the world of international football? Uh, wouldn't, probably. When I was maybe 12, we talked to girls on Prodigy. What is Prodigy? You had to cradle a f Oh, you're telling me. You had to cradle a phone into a special rig, just like in an 80s movie. Wow. They still use floppy disks as a save icon. Yeah, but I imagine a lot of young kids now don't realise... That it, that's what it is. They probably just think that's the save icon. They don't realise it represents what floppy disks look like. motion going on behind me. I feel like Anna's about to burst through the door. I remember having to store my coursework on floppy disks and not having labels, so I had to guess which was which. Wow. <laughs> Symbols have to be kept the same as their international standards that all software, etc. has to keep to. I'm not saying we should change the symbols. It's just I imagine a lot of young people who've never seen a floppy disk probably don't realize the origins of that button that icon did i watch nintendo direct i didn't i like to be surprised when i go on amazon and pre-order stuff i tend to usually when we're recording the podcast on a friday night usually at some point usually while sheepdog's talking i'll just go onto amazon and go into the video game page and go look at um, games releasing in the next 90 days and just pre-order any bits that i didn't know was already coming and that's my version of gaming news now. I just see what's available to pre-order on Amazon. That is a ridiculous throw. That was an absolutely ridiculous throw in from Dante Casanova. He's just thrown that to the far post. Look at the state of that. How's Dave tonight? Dave is good. Dave's had a good day. Envel envelopes still exist. I bought a pack of envelopes the other day. Look, I've got an envelope here. These are the envelopes I got off Amazon. So I can pay for the PO box. Because the PO box is so stupid. They keep sending me an invoice every month. And then I have to do them a bank transfer. I rang them up and said, can I not just set up a direct debit? And they said, yeah, of course you can. And I'm there thinking, right, shall I give you my... Shall I give you my account details then? Oh, no. We need to post you a direct debit mandate. And then you need to fill it in and send it back to us through the post. They're single-handedly keeping themselves in business. I don't know how to post a letter. 
I've got to buy stamps now. I've ne I don't remember the last time I couldn't just set up a direct debit over the phone or on the app. Royal Mail is run by cavemen. So if anyone could send a stamp to my P.O. box, that would be appreciated. I, uh, I misinterpreted what Kanga just wrote and thought he was calling me baby and asking me if I was awake. And it was really freaky. I get free stamps when I was a postie. Nice. I work for Royal Mail. I'm staying quiet. Surely working for Royal Mail, you're all for them posting less stuff. Come on, boys and girls. Well, probably just boys. I don't think we've got many girls in the team. But let's do some football. Oh, ho, ho, Martel Taylor Crossdale. What a man. More parcels than letters now. Yeah, I can see that. 90p for a first class stamp. I'd be cheaper to drive it there. Where's it going? How far away is Bolton? 90p. I remember first class stamps being 22p, I think, when I had my first full-time job. I think first class was 22p, second class was 18p, because sometimes I'd be sent down to the post office to buy a sheet of stamps, and I have to get one of each. So I think it was £22 for the first class sheet, £18 for the second class sheet. Okay, if you can afford that, you're the richest man in the FM community after all. You people don't understand how being the richest man works. You don't become the richest man by wasting 90p on posting something. Being rich isn't about how much you earn. It's about how much you don't spend. That's the that's the key to being rich. Oh. It would cost more than 90p in fuel. Not if I stole a car, it wouldn't. What's the difference between first and second class mail? Um, I think they I think they promise not to open up first class stuff and have a look to see if there's a fiver in there. Whereas the second class stuff is fair game, I think. Pretty sure that's the only difference. Sheets of stamps is an old timey sentence. <laughs> yeah, I know. First class mail get better meals. Yeah, if it if it's first class mail, it's offered a coffee just as you're going past Stevenage. I'd post you a stamp, but I need a stamp to post it. <sighs> Stamps will be sold on the black market soon at those prices. Yeah. My goodness. Um, they, yeah, stamps are in books, but also sheets. A sheet of stamps is a hundred stamps on a big sheet that we used to buy when I was working in a building society. We'd have to get sheets of stamps. So I'd be sent out for a sheet of stamps. Um, we're in the final of the Nathaniel MG Cup, boys and girls. We haven't won this one. Guess who we're playing in the final? Of course, it's TNS. But we've got the opportunity to win the big one, the Nathaniel MG Cup. So exciting. You have forever stamps. What, pray, is a forever stamp? Do you mean like... The, I don't think the stamps have the price on. I think they just say first or second. So if what you're asking is, could I buy 100 stamps now and still be using them in 10 years' time? I think the answer is yes, you can. Careful, careful over the place. Why have you started on this car? Because it's cheaper than a stamp. I'm not sure they'd accept that. I think they would. I think if I told them that I was asked to pay 90 pence for a stamp, they'd agree that that was the real crime and go and prosecute the post office instead. Okay, I've watching the Lelujo live videos at the moment to get caught up with the save and is 
And in one of them, you're talking about your book. I'm not really a lazy student. Would you still recommend getting it for general exam advice? Yes. The Lazy Student's Revision Guide as a title was my first ever experience of clickbait. We agreed that that was the most clickbaity title I could use because, you know, it catches the eye, doesn't it? So yeah, it's not really... If you're, if you're too lazy, um, it wouldn't really work for you. It's the it's kind of a the it I talk a lot about starting revision early and doing a little bit but doing it quite early and often. So yeah, it doesn't work if you're lazy, basically. But it does mean you don't have to do loads of work every day. If the price of mailing a letter goes up and you bought cheap stamps before, then your stamps are invalid if they aren't forever stamps. I'm guessing they are forever stamps then. I don't know. So my book is a book of lies. No, it's just well, uh, well clickbaited. Guessing it's fine for exams in Scotland. Yeah, it's there's nothing really about the exams themselves. It's more about general study technique. These are techniques I use to do my driving theory test and my financial advisor exams and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's not good. We're supposed to be winning a football match here and we've conceded a goal early on. This is completely against what the plan was. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, 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 um, bum, bum, bum. I mean, we're comfortably top of the league at the moment. We're not in England. We're in Welsh Wales. TNS is playing Barry from EastEnders. We need to get back into this game. This might be the way to do it. Oh, there we go. Couldn't you do an audio book called The Really Lazy Revision Guide? I did start recording the audio book about five years ago, but my at the time I only had a blue snowball microphone. And I recorded the first couple of chapters and the audio quality was just not publishing level. I imagine now I've got my fancy setup here. If I bought one of those little boxes to put over my head and around me to sound booth up, then I could probably do the audio book or just pay Matt to do it. Could you not just draw a stamp in the corner? Who will know? Probably those same post office people. Bearing in mind, I mean, the flaw to your plan there is I'm literally trying to post the letter to the Royal Mail head office. <laughs> and I think they might notice. This is it. Here, Bill. Just one of ours? Oh, I don't know about that, Gary. That, that doesn't look quite right. Bill, I... Th checking he's drawn this on. You know what I think he might have done? Oh, dear. No, it's not a free post address. They want their pound of flesh. Or just pay Matt to do it. He spoke quicker than I could type. I was going to say likewise. If, it, if I was writing a new book now, that's exactly what I would do. But it's a six-year-old book. I don't think I need to pay his extortionate rates for a, an audiobook version at this point. I don't actually know how much he charges, but I assume a reasonable amount. He's an adult who does it as a job. So I imagine he pay he charges reasonable prices that I can't afford. Kev streams, come for the FM, stay for the banter and the mini performances. I'm quite the thespian these days. Come on, let's do more footballs. Dante Casanova's taken a knock. That's no good. He's got the best name in football. Should stamps be null and void? Yes, they should. If the National League North and South is, then stamps definitely should be. I mean, to me, it's completely reasonable asking the post to be delivered for free. We're asking footballers to play for free. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Still weird when you hear him on ads for things. I've not heard any of his ads yet because I don't 
consume adverts. Mm. I pay for YouTube premium because I'm a good boy. I'm not going to sing Turn This Ship Around. Tell Matt you'll dedicate your next stream of Showdown Championship to him. Yeah, I could do. Dante Casanova is valued at 9 million on my save playing for Birmingham City. Yeah, we've definitely got quite a high level of player in this Lethley side now. There are players I did not expect to be playing at this level. I guess the lure of European football is bringing them in, maybe. Yes. Bum, bum. Our TNS, our TNS are winning now as well. So it's still a five point gap. A five point gap is a jolly splendid gap to have. I'd like it to keep getting larger, but we'll take five points for the rest of the season. That works for me. Anna's lurking in the chat. Hi, Anna. So Anna's the mod that's here, is she? I heard him on an ad on one of your YouTube videos. It was a little weird initially. So yeah, he's a confusing man. If you could write a book about anything and not have to worry about publishing costs, what would I write about? Um, I don't know. Probably disappear entirely up my own backside and write a memoir. I think I've had quite an interesting life. So far. I'm not dying. I'd also love to write my novel. I've got a couple of ideas for novels in my head. I will write a novel one day. My long-term plan is to get enough money together so that I don't have to work and then really scale back the YouTube stuff. We're talking like 10 years down the line if I can string it out for that long. Scale the YouTube stuff back massively. Just do like four or five months videos when the new game comes out and have the rest of the year writing novels and have a have a second act in my life as a novelist. What genre would I want to write? Um, I've got sort of half written books in a few different genres we've we've dabbled in writing a bit of fiction before we did a written word version of a sitcom that we did as six different episodes so i'd like to rewrite that i've got like four seasons of a sitcom planned out in my mind that me and sheepdog were working on years ago um i've got uh i've got my i'm like a quarter of the way through writing a young adult novel the only problem is it's set in a I, I can't release it ever now because it's set in like a post-apocalyptic near future i said it's young adult they love all that um but it's set after there's been a worldwide pandemic i started writing this like three or four years ago probably longer there's been a pandemic everyone's yeah basically it looks like it's been set straight after covid so there's going to be a gazillion of those books released in the next two years um, but yeah, there's loads of stuff I want to write eventually. You could bring out an autobiography one day. Change the pandemic to aliens and you're set. That's not how the creative process works. The whole concept of the book needs the pandemic element of it. Without going too deep into it, um, they've rebuilt the old walls of the City of London. People are staying in there because they think if they go the other side of these walls... The disease that's out there is going to get them. And it turns out the disease isn't out there. It was all a conspiracy. It's better than I've just made it sound in that couple of sentences. I've made it sound really terrible. I promise it's a better concept than that. But I don't want to spoil it because I will write it in 25 years when everyone's forgotten about COVID. It's not COVID because I was writing it well before COVID. No, no one fought for Lou Roll. I missed. I didn't anticipate that's what people would do, but I might add that into the rewrites. Dun, dun, dun. TNS need to stop trying to sign all my players. The absolute buttock heads. They're just trying to mess with the team that is now obviously better than them. And we're about to beat them to the Nathaniel MG Cup. The big one. The cup everybody wants to win. The oh, Dante Casanova needs a week's holiday. He's going to miss out on the big one. Because you know I always give players holidays when my physio tells me to. 
because I'm a responsible manager. How far in the future is it set? Like 15 years? It's a time span where like the the old folk and by the old folk, I'm talking like peop the, the parents of the teenagers that are in it remember life before being stuck behind the wall. So probably 15-ish years. But the youngsters have only ever lived behind the wall. Need to write in your novel how Vanarama North and South was null and void because of the virus. Yeah, I will do. That'll be uh, there'll be like three chapters on that early on to really get the teenage girls interested. How come there's a cup final in January? I don't make the rules. I love the irony of the twist being the virus was a conspiracy when there are people around who generally believe that now. I know. Imagine if I got it all right. What's the name of that website where you can publish fiction chapter by chapter as you're writing it? I can't remember what it was called. But I put like the first five or six chapters on there way back, like we're going back five years probably. In fact, this was all before YouTube. It's been so long since I've written any of it. But it's still always buzzing around in my brain. I just don't have time to write it anymore. Um, but some of the early bits are probably still on there. If you could go back to any year, what year would I go back to and why? 2019, because the technology was about as modern as you can get in a pre-COVID world. I'd just go back to immediately before the world went to turd. But I still want to have like a Switch and an iPhone and an iPad Pro. And I still want to be a YouTuber. I just want COVID to go away. So people were stuck behind a wall for no reason. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. If I do that, why don't it just go to turd again? I'll just book a trip to China. And when that fella's trying to eat that bat, I'll just smack it out of his hands. What the hell are you doing? That's a bat, you moron. Put it down. Here's a cheese and pickle sandwich. Get out of here. And then just sling the bat back into the woods. Yes, I'm a hero. You're welcome. Wattpad. Yes, Wattpad. It was all on there. It, I, I re, I'm, now I'm talking about it, I really hope it's not on there anymore because it was terrible. It needs a good edit. But it was safe putting it on there then because no one knew who I was. Right, it is the Nathaniel MG Cup Final. Did you just say cheese and pickle sandwich? Yeah, cheese and pickle sandwich is the best sandwich ever. Like ch cheddar cheese, Branston pickle. Beautiful. Remember, I'm in England where pickle means pickle. And it doesn't mean pickled gherkin. Remember, we use the language properly. I heard exploding barbed wire deathmatch not 24 hours ago. And that's the strangest combination of words I've been exposed to in a long time. <laughs> yeah. It is a pretty odd combination of words. That's for sure. Kev's just upset half the chat. Nah. Remember, I turned heel. I have to, I have to upset you. Streaming showdowns next weekend. I've got to fully embrace my heel character. McDonald's do American cheese and American pickles in a bun. Just with a bit bit of meat in there. What are you talking about? Cheese and pickle is lush. That is correct. But don't get the sandwich pickle. Embrace the chunks, you monsters. Why they would call... I mean, why is sandwich pickle... It's, they call it sandwich pickle and it's much smaller chunks. But all pickle is for sandwiches. And I like the chunks. Are there any odds for the next stream showdown? There won't be odds until the draft's done. Is the final of the showdown going to be an exploding barbed wire death match? Probably.
Most annoying thing about American English is how they pronounce aluminium. I t yeah. Is it? Do they spell it wrong as well? Found it for your Pinterest, but the Wattpad link does not work. I forgot I ever had a Pinterest. You can tell I've tried everything on social media over the years. So they do spell aluminium wrong as well. Okay, well that excuses them a little bit. We both spell and pronounce it wrong, but that's fair enough. If you were pronouncing it wrong when it was still spelt right, that just makes you all look like silly gooses. But if it's actually just a different word... They also can't spell colour correctly. I mean, as much as it pains me to say, we're the ones spelling that wrong. What business does that you have being in there? If we're getting rid of the Q, we need to get rid of superfluous U's as well. This whole conversation is so null and void because you deem whatever it is you call pickle, cheese, and bread just thrown in a lump food. I'm not throwing it in a lump. I mean, are you telling me you've never eaten a cheese sandwich? Is America that weird? You've never had a cheese sandwich? Pickle is just a sauce that you put on a cheese sandwich. It's easy. Can we stop saying null and void, please? Never. Never just cheese. What? I mean, if I know anything from American TV show, Nick TV shows, it's about how many times they talk about this thing called a grilled cheese, which from what I can, from what I can gather, is a fried cheese sandwich where no grill is involved. Yeah, the pickle is the main event in the cheese and pickle sandwich. Are we basically saying that America has no idea what it's doing and can't describe things properly? I think that's what we've got to, yeah. It feels like we've uh, we've let them go out on their own for long enough. It's time to bring them back into the fray and just remind them how things are done. Let's go and annex them. They'll love that. Just fix a few of the broken bits. And then they can have then they can have their little war with us again and then we'll be off. Why do Americans have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? I mean, I will I will refuse to call it peanut butter and jelly, but peanut butter and jam I had for the first time this year. Oh, they're nice. The Americans were onto something there. Peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Looks like we're not winning the Nathaniel MG Cup. We start teaching about promotion and relegation. That'll be one of the things on the agenda, yes. You can do whatever you want with the government. I super don't care. Please give us health care, but I will die on the hill of not eating pickle and cheese sandwiches. You don't even know what pickle is. You have no idea. You're still imagining a, like a gherkin, like you'd have a burger or something when you think of pickle. That's not what pickle is. Damn it, it's not what pickle is. <laughs> P 
It's not a pickle. It's pickle. Pickle is a sloppy thing that is in a jar like jam. You don't get a pickle. You have some pickle. Like a relish, I guess, yeah. What is pickled? All sorts of horrible veg. Branston pickle. It's brilliant. Well, we're not we've not won this cup and no one cares. Could someone take me out, time me out, please. <laughs> Do I like pick a lily? No. It's too yellow. What do I think of chutney? Never had any reason to have it because I like pickle. So I'll just eat pickle instead. I don't want to watch this. I don't want to see this. Get this off my screen. We've let them have one. Oh, get off with this. Cheese and pickle sandwiches are great. Anna's just sent me a message. Is it about pickle? No, it's just a TikTok. Um, right, another fractured wrist. Ah, he can go to a specialist. We'll see who gets fit quicker. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. Right. Hopefully that wasn't the start of the terrible form that we get every time we get to the champions group because it is now... 10 games until the end of... Oh, we've still got to play Barry from East Enders. It's the Welsh Cup now. What is it with all the cups? I'm done with cups. Just let us win the league. I love how this chat's gone from bashing down the void and low league football to discussing what pickle is. There's no discussion about what pickle is. Right, Adam. This needs. This is. This is getting absurd now. I'll let you lot say a lot of stuff, but I won't have people bashing pickle. Pickle, pickle. It's pickle. Look, people wear pickle T-shirts. Pickle. Show me the pickle. 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 <sighs> I hope someone's clipping Kev saying pickle over and over again. Ah, oh, brown wet stuff. Yeah, delicious. Like brown sauce is brown wet stuff. Chocolate milkshake is brown wet stuff. Just because it's brown and wet doesn't make it bad. <laughs> you know, when you say or hear a word so much, it sounds made up. That's pickle now. Yeah, it's pickle. Might have to get a pickle t-shirt. I mean, I would say most of my clothes have a pickle stain on them somewhere. I'm forever eating pickle. Love pickle. Pickle, 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 pickle. Pickle, 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 pickle. Love pickle. Pickle loves me. Oh. Might go and get pickle now. But yes, <laughs> to summarize, I would travel back to 2019 and prevent coronavirus from happening by knocking the bat out of that man's hand and giving him a cheese and pickle sandwich instead. The end. If you bring pickle up on a stream, I'll unsub. Pickle, pickle, pickle. Pickle, pickle, pickle. Now find the unsub button. <laughs> oh, dear. Lovely old pickle. Why have I just signed this guy? I wasn't involved in this at all. I wasn't engaged with this process. I just signed a player from Wigan. Well, there we go. 
Lovely. I should have been paying attention, really, to know what was going on, but I'm just going to let it happen. It's happening to me. If he ends up being a good player, it was absolutely my signing. What have we learned? Never talk to Kev about food. People love pickle. Need a player called Pickle. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Didn't we already sign Ryan Reynolds? Yes, we did, but never played him. And presumably he went back. Oh, well. Do, 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 do. Suddenly we seem able to scout players in England, which we weren't able to do before, which is interesting. I've just noticed Laban is on there. If we can, Laban wouldn't come on trial to us before. If we can get him, we know from last year's home save, he was, he was a championship quality goalkeeper that we sold for a lot of money. Do I like ham pickle? No, we talked about this at length the other night. Keep pickle away from meat. I don't want it on ham. I don't want it on corned beef. I don't want it on my pork pie. I want my pickle on cheese and that is it. I mean, he's not going to get a work permit, so I don't really know why I'm bothering with that. My buttocks have gone numb. Oh, I need a new chair desperately. Desperately need a new chair. If someone could arrange that for me, my coccyx is throbbing. You're too, you're too old. You're too old. It's Keen Brian. It's named, your name's backwards, Brian. What have you done with your name there, Brian, you silly goose? It's the wrong way round. Let's see if we can sign Brian Keen and fix his name. No, he wants far too much money. Silly Brian. Do I like pickled onions? Pickled onions are okay. What about pickle on pate? Get out of here. Ridiculous. Just pickle on cheese. Only on cheese. One of those orthopedic chairs with a hole cut out for my coccyx. I would love a coccyx hole. It would be perfect. Where is the one-armed swan? There he is. Penis on Marmite. Top tier. Lovely. Delicious stuff. This will horrify you. Branston Pickle in the USA has high fructose corn syrup instead of sugar. I mean, I'm utterly indifferent to that. I don't know what difference that would make to the flavour. It's still just sugar, isn't it? Marmite's brilliant. I won't hear anyone speak ill of Marmite. It's delicious. If you've got taste buds, you like Marmite. The only people who don't like Marmite are the people who don't really know how to taste properly and, and have this delicious, savoury taste sensation on their lips and on their tongue and in their eyes and wherever else it might be. And are like, oh no, that's too delicious and savoury for my liking. Please give me something bland and awful. I haven't had the new chili marmite, but they didn't have it for, at Tesco for my delivery. I should have had a look at it when I was in fancy old Waitrose earlier. I bet they have it in like a, a, a terracotta jar or something in there for 19 quid. I have taste buds and can confirm that you're incorrect. Then I can confirm you actually don't have taste buds. You are mistaken. I hate Marmite, but recognise I have bland taste buds. Exactly. I'm allergic to Marmite. I'd fight. I'd battle through. <laughs> I'd, I'd just I'd just have an EpiPen on hand. Just so that I could have... What would I have on my toast? Marmite and EpiPen on toast. That would be my daily breakfast.
How many suits do I have? Um, full suits? None. Jackets that make me look like I'm wearing a suit? Eight at this point, I think. Kev's advice, it's worth dying for Marmite. I, um, nothing's worth dying for. I'd, I'd happy to be, I'm happy for it to be the last thing I tasted before having my consciousness transferred onto the internet. I'd happy to lose my physical form and have Marmite be the last thing that passed my lips. Tuna and cheese toasties. Oh, I've got another thing for the Kev cookbook that you lot are going to think is mental. Oh, God. If we're talking about toasties. I don't even know if I should even share this one. Okay, so this has to be made in one of those Breville sandwich toasters. I'm not talking about something you can just put under the grill or put in a frying pan or put in a George Foreman grill. This only works if it's in the proper sealed, like, hold on, toasty. A pub toasty. Let's find a proper toasty. One of these. It has to be made in one of these machines where it seals it in all around. So a proper toasty like that. And in this toasty... Oh, bear with me. In the toasty... Oh, I'm not even making this up. I find it delicious. In this toasty, I have my two pieces of bread, which obviously you butter the bread on the outside so it goes nice and crisp. And then on one slice, so on the inside of one slice, so the butter's on the outside, on the inside of one slice, Marmite. Then you need a can of sliced mushrooms. They cannot be fresh mushrooms. They have to be canned sliced mushrooms. Obviously, drain the water off. Fill it with loads of canned sliced mushrooms. Then you need the little jar of Schwartz garlic powder really generous amount of garlic powder over the top of the mushrooms cheese on top of that other slice of bread on top cook and you get all the you basically have like cheesy garlic mushrooms with that lovely marmitey aftertaste within a toasted cheese sandwich it's, it's really nice it's genuinely really nice i am just i'm a pregnant woman all year round Straz gaming thank you for the sub <laughs> how many recipes is this for my cookbook now if we can get to 20 i am doing a cookbook <laughs> Kev, can you please do a sub goal to stop you talking about food? You'd be the richest man then. People love me talking about food. Mushrooms are my favourite food. But the reason it has to be the tinned mushrooms is because if they were like fresh mushrooms, you'd have to cook them first because they're not going to cook inside a sandwich from raw and you, no one wants raw mushrooms in their, in their sandwich. But if you have the canned ones, they're already cooked and you're just reheating them. So that's why they have to be canned mushrooms. Um, but it's cheesy garlic mushrooms in a sandwich. What's not to like? The Marmite's there just because, you know, any any excuse to squeeze some Marmite into a meal. I have tuna and olive sandwich. That sounds nice. Kev's food book, how to start an argument in the kitchen. <laughs> Kev is a hobbit. Ah! Mushrooms are just my favourite food. I love mushrooms. Why are we saying this now? This is a creep out. I, mean, I can't believe it didn't come up when we were talking about my favourite foods on the showdown before. I need to get this cookbook ready. No one wants raw mushrooms in their sandwich. What a quote. <laughs> I mean, it is true. That could be like the... That could be the, the cover recipe. Because that's relatively normal. It's just a cheese and mushroom sandwich. That's pretty normal compared to some of the other stuff we're going to have later in. Told the wife of your toasty idea she liked the idea. She's very wise.
James May can write a cookbook and show, then go for it. Yeah. Everyone you beat should get a copy of my cookbook. The thing with a cookbook is I need to have real good photography done. I need to get myself a macro lens so the photography is... I need chef's kiss photography. In what universe is cheese and mushroom normal? I mean, ever been to a French restaurant? Cheese and mushrooms is pretty, pretty, pretty normal. I mean, mushrooms on pizza is pretty normal. I, I find it hard to believe that that's the challenge. book's going to be written by me. Absolutely. I'm learning a lot of people here are afraid of flavour and taste. <laughs> There's a surprising amount of people out there who don't like mushrooms, which is weird. What about spinach, cheese and aubergine toasty? I've not had aubergine in a toasty before. I often hide spinach in things. Like if I'm ever making a milkshake or a smoothie or something, I'll always put spinach in it. Just because you can't taste it. You can make you could make like a chocolate milkshake in the, in a blender and just put a handful of spinach in there with the milk and the chocolate sauce. You ain't gonna taste that spinach, but you've just had a load of raw leafy greens, which is really good for you. So I hide spinach in lots of things. just to try and up my veggies. Whatever happened to eating the Weetabix? I keep eating it not on camera because it's delicious. There's not much left now. But I'll perhaps start Sunday's stream with a lovely bit of Weetabix and marmalade. I think that toast is strange. My wife has Marmite, banana and cheese. That sounds reasonable. I haven't had baked beans in my Weetabix yet, no. Who is this Harry you lot are talking about? I don't understand what's going on. It's being a bit odd. How can you tell in this chat? <laughs> what what's he doing? Suggesting that you uh that you put marmite on your cereal or something? I think Kev realised he's in no position to hear a food idea and say that sounds disgusting. No, I've just seen directly above you mayonnaise and apple. I'm not really a mayonnaise fan, so mayonnaise and apple sounds horrible. I suppose you don't eat pickle on your eat Vicks. I'm not a weirdo. Do I still have the bowl that separates the milk from the cereal? No. That was the first time you thought I was insane. And then we found out that people had made a solution, so I'm not insane. I just don't like wet cereal. I like to keep the milk away from the cereal until the last possible moment. One of the things that my, I gag when I'm watching TV shows, when you see someone make a bowl of cereal, when they put the cereal in the bowl, then pour the milk on, and then it's this next bit that makes me gag. They get the spoon and they mush the cereal down into the milk and then start eating it. And that's like, oh! God, what are you doing? That, that cereal is all going to be wet now. Oh, it's hideous. I want the milk to just, just tickle the edge of the cereal at the last possible second. If I, could, if I had more arms, and this is one of the reasons why I would like more arms, I would have the cereal in the bowl dry. I would hold the bowl with one hand, spoon up the dry cereal with the other, and then have my third hand with a tidy little jug of milk. So that as I open my mouth and got the spoon hand close, the milk jug is like, right, now, 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 pour the cereal on the last possible second. So the milk is there. I want the milk for the flavor, but I don't want the cereal to be wet at all. Oh. <sighs> Do 
But yeah, the bowl, someone sent me a bowl. We found it on stream. Um, I think it was a Kickstarter cereal bowl that separates milk. Um, it wasn't any of these. It had a little raised platform in for the cereal to sit on. So basically the bottom of the bowl was where the milk went, but you had a little section where you could kind of pour the milk out so it hit the cereal just as you were scooping. It was really clever. It was a Kickstarter thing, but it doesn't look like it's coming up on Google now. Uh, oh, what was that transfer that we've just ignored? Yeah, the amount of people who thought I was weird for that, but I can't understand why anyone would like wet cereal. Sometimes leave the cereal to marinate in the milk. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh. How do I feel about grits? I'm not sure I know what grits is. What is grits? I've heard it mentioned on American TV and stuff. But I don't think I've ever had whatever grits is. <laughs> I really, I, I'm wondering if that's a deliberate typo or an accidental typo. Just put MILF in a bottle, in a spray bottle. Um, I think that has completely different effect to what you were suggesting. I'm not going to put a MILF in a spray bottle. It's a typo. <laughs> One of the worst things is being mid-serial and having to take a phone call or something. Soggy cereal. I've just been it. Anna's got quite cross with me at times. Like, we've been having breakfast and I'm like midway through some cereal and the doorbell will ring and she'll just be like, are you going to get that? Well, no, I'm not because I've got cereal. It's actually ruining it a little bit that I'm having to explain why I'm not going to the door. Because all the while we're talking, I'm not eating this cereal as quickly as possible to stop it getting wet. We've had arguments about it. Grits is cornmeal porridge. And cornmeal is what? Am I a fan of curry? I am a fan of, fan of curry. Perfect to be on intermittent fasting. I'm watching this food bonanza. Ah, it's fine. You lot are the ones who lead me to talk about food all the time. It's your fault. Ground corn. Do we have an equivalent in England that we eat? What type of curry? Pretty much any type of curry. Love a curry. I um, I would have no qualms turning up at an Indian restaurant and just asking them to bring out whatever their best thing was. So his work permit is rejected, but he's happy to sign for us anyway. Lazy toad. We're not signing him. Am I a fan of Mexican food? Yes, love Mexican food. One of the uh, one of the most unfortunate things about poor old Anna, she doesn't like Mexican food at all. And any time I suggest going out anywhere, my first suggestion is always Mexican because I love Mexican food. I don't get to have it a lot. But I do love Mexican food. Do I like spicy food? Yes. The equivalent is literally whatever mealy substance with no flavor you use to deliver tasty condiments. We don't really have such a thing, I don't think. can't think of an equivalent that we would have. Right, it is the champions group time, boys and girls. Porridge oats are like that. But isn't grits something you have with, with a meal? Whereas you wouldn't like do steak, chips, and porridge, would you? Yeah, we're going to time Harry Young out because being racist and then going joke doesn't mean it wasn't racist in the first place. So you've got five minutes to just grow up. 
and not be a wang basket when you come back the first thing you say when you return is i'm sorry kev if it's not you get banned simple we have a zero tolerance policy on racism here boys and girls He did that earlier. I didn't see... If he'd have said that's what he was doing, he'd have been gone. But I saw him say it there and just get him out. Right. Let's go try and win a football match. You know what? I do agree, actually. Lifetime ban. Don't care. Not going to have... Not going to have... There's no excuse for it. Let's just ban him completely. There you go. He's out. He is done. <laughs> Let's see what form he regenerates in. And then we can ban them too. There have been mods around at various points. There's just, I guess, none here right now. I swear when I heard you say wang, I thought you were going to say something else. That's one of the reasons why I say it. Kanga's lurking between babysitting his own baby. Is it babysitting if it's your own baby? You forgot to add the player search for points. I did forget to do that. That's a good point. Bum, bum, bum. Isn't it just parenting? I think it is just parenting. Oh, the one-armed swan was in there. There he is again. Oh, he only needs one arm. Oh, it's after 10 now. I'm going to get a message from Anna now saying, why are you yelling about a man only having one arm? And he's in bed. Sorry, Anna. I imagine that message is coming through as we speak. No. No, it hasn't. Oh, no, there it is. Yep, there it is. What's my favourite type of alcoholic beverage? Uh, Kev fact, don't drink alcohol. He did a cartwheel. He actually did a cartwheel with a broken arm. That probably shouldn't be happening, should it? You definitely made my 2020, 2021 a lot easier to cope watching your content. Thank you very much. Happy to help. Glad you're enjoying it. Hope he's not claiming benefits for his broken arm. But he's still coming to work every day. What benefits is he going to be claiming? Do, 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 do. Come on, boys. Let's have another one. This has been a little bit tighter than I hoped it would be, this game. Uh, Joel, I also don't partake in um, ganja, as you've put it. Uh, believe it or not, I'm an interesting enough man not to need to alter my brain to enjoy myself. Therefore, I, I need neither alcohol nor drugs. I'm just having a lovely time without needing to change how my old bra how, how the old think box works. How long has it been since you quit work to push this? <laughs> is, is that, is, I don't know if that's the most romantic way of describing my uh, me living my dream. Um, but I started quitting work to push this about three and a half years ago. I, I, yeah, I don't like the devil's lettuce. Yeah, oh yeah, I love a mushroom. In a, in a sandwich. That came across so wrong. <laughs> oh, this isn't good. We can't be dropping points in these kind of games. 
this is why we didn't win the league last year because we got into the champions group and we just started dropping points in silly games and it's annoying come on we need a winner here we've got two minutes left to grab a winner from somewhere oh 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 that's got to be a penalty that had to be a penalty surely oh no not magic mushrooms Do I like the name Kev? Yes. There's some weird questions going on tonight. The world's just being a bit weird this evening, isn't it? Oh, no. Just no. I mean, are we moving clubs after this season? Depends if anyone will take me. I mean, we've tried every season of the save and we've not had a single interview yet. So it's kind of out of my hands as and when we leave. I can't leave if no one will take me. Is Twitch moving into that weird part of the internet? Yeah, it's, is this the sign that Twitch has gone mainstream? <laughs> oh no, Twitch is mainstream. It's gone like the YouTube comments. Maybe it's not weird, your brain has just been altered. My brain is spot on. Right, well, that was an unfortunate result. Now we have to play Barry off of EastEnders. Google Crunch Cup is exactly what you want for your cereal. The cereal goes in your mouth at the same time as the milk. This sounds brilliant. Crunch Cup. If this is porn, I'm banning you. Because I don't know. It could be. I should never Google things you tell me to Google. Oh, this is amazing. He's better be available in the UK. I know, I need a UK one. Crunch Cup UK. They must. Aha, aha, aha. Currently unavailable. Rubbish. I am definitely buying one of those once I can find a way to get one in the UK. Because that is amazing. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's good to see um, TNS are selling players on the cheap the way home have to as well. That makes me feel a little bit better. Kickstarter project originally too. Awesome. Just eat your cereal like a normal human. Yeah, but then the cereal's going to get all wet, isn't it? I don't want it to be wet. Look like the kind of thing you'd give a 90-year-old so they don't drop drop their spoon. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to be able to eat... I mean, that kills two birds with one stone. The cereal's better because it's not all wet. I can eat it one-handed. I could drive the car whilst eating cereal. You're telling me you've never wanted to eat cereal while driving your car? I could fly a plane whilst eating cereal. And don't add any milk, but then it's just dry cereal. We've been over this. Were you not here 20 minutes ago? I'm right on this one. I'll admit some of my food stuff is weird. I am right about this. Cereal bars are dirt. I'm not getting arrested for eating cereal driving my car. I don't ever drive my car without eating something. I don't want dry cereal. I want cereal and milk in my mouth, but I don't want soggy cereal. I want the cereal to have just, just this moment been introduced to the milk. Oh, hello. That's what milk is. Fantastic. That's what I want that to be happening as it hits my mouth. All my life, I've just been dry. I thought I'd be dry forever. And then a millisecond before I was crushed to death by teeth, I learned what being wet was like. That's what I want from my cereal. What 
kind of milks do I drink? Uh, most of the time I have oat milk. Oat milk is my favourite. Everything else just takes, tastes a little bit weird. Oat milk tastes like you're having cream in your coffee. Genuinely prefer oat milk to cow juice. George, toodle pip. Oat milk tastes like the end of a bowl of sugar puffs. Um, good. Th that's a good thing, right? One of the best parts about the cereal is the leftover milk at the end, which I know goes against everything I was saying about keeping it. You need, you almost need two bowls. One bowl of cereal you're eating and one bowl of sacrificial cereal that's just there to flavour the milk so you can drink it afterwards. But you, you're obviously going to sieve that cereal out to make sure you don't like accidentally swallow a soggy milk soap sugar puff. Our cereal is so complicated. Look, I didn't invent it. I've just perfected it. Could you eat cereal with a colander and a bowl? Um, I mean, I guess you could. Seems a bit ex extreme now we know the crunch cup exists. That's all you need. Plus, I imagine it'll actually teach me to have a sensible human-sized portion of cereal. Because I've never understood this, the portion sizes on a box of cereal. But everyone knows a standard box of cereal has three portions in. But apparently it's got like 25. So maybe having the crunch cup will teach me to eat cereal in normal size portions. The Eagles is off as well. Toodle Pip Eagles. Kev is a genius. That is true. Barry from EastEnders is beating us. We just, I'm fed up. If we lose this game, I'm ending the stream and we'll try again on Sunday night. I'm fed up of the Champions Group being just ruining us every time. We bottle it every time we get here. Three portions in a box. Are you eating past, cereal in pasta bowls? I mean, I don't live in a castle. I don't have bowls for cereal, bowls for pasta, bowls for soup, bowls for, I mean, I have bowls. We use the same bowls for all purposes. <laughs> how, how many bowls do you own? A bowl is a bowl. I just eat everything out of my Batman bowl. We have specific pasta bowls that are a plate bowl hybrid. Someone's fancy, goodness me. Someone's doing all right for themselves, isn't they? People say I'm rich. A specific bowl for pasta. <laughs> Wait, you don't have bowls, soup bowls and pasta dishes. No, we have bowls and plates. Oh, this is great. I'm not angry, just disappointed. Give them the not. I'm just giving them a. I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. Bowls. And, I'm gonna go and buy some cereal. But what is it? Pasta bowls, cereal bowls. I've eaten bowls and prep bowls. But yeah, we have like a big bowl that you mix stuff in. Pasta bowls are a game changer. I mean, would they be considering we don't have pasta? So as a household that doesn't ever eat pasta. What would I use a pasta bowl for? <laughs> this might be why we don't own pasta bowls, because we don't have pasta. Scholary, thank you very much for the, for the bits. We need a goal here. Why no pasta? Because it's not all that. And Anna's gluten intolerant. It's just like carbs to put sauce on, isn't it? I don't really, I don't really see why people get so crazy about pasta. It's just pasta. It's nothing special. We, I mean, we'll occasionally have some gluten-free pasta, but I mean, pasta's just cheapo student food, isn't it? It's not. I've never eaten pasta and thought, oh, that was a really delicious meal that I wish I could have again and again and again. It's just pasta. 
I like lasagna, mainly because of the cheese. As an Italian, I'm offended. I mean, I, I imagine proper Italian pasta is probably something special. I'm talking about the dried pasta that you get for 30p a bag in Tesco. That's nothing special. You can mix pasta with other foods. Why, though? Why not just eat the other foods? Pasta isn't interesting. It's only you need to put effort into what you... Why? I'll just make food that's nice. <laughs> Mrs. Wearmuth's going to fire me here. I need to watch what I'm saying. Can I just point out we've turned this ship around? You know, you meant to cook it. Yeah, you meant to cook I get you meant to cook it. Macaroni cheese I don't like. I don't like macaroni cheese at all. It's just too cheesy. There you go. Kev's got it right. Pasta is a bit boring. Pasta is a bit boring. It's just, it's just pasta, isn't it? Pasta gravy cheese. That sounds hideous. Oh my god, that sounds horrible. That's the thing is, it's really hard to have a healthy pasta dish. Because how do you not just cover it in oil and cheese and just stuff that you shouldn't be eating? It's a big pile of quick release carbs for that lovely old sugar rush and you cover it in fat. Well, the chat good. I mean, we had a racist in. He wasn't great. But we dealt with him. Basic Greg, thank you very much for the sub. Good evening. How are we doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. We've just offended all of Italy. We were worried we were going to lose this game. As an Italian, I'm a bit offended by your claim. Look, you need to take it for what it is. I reckon Italian pasta would... If I was in Italy, I would eat pasta. Because I'm sure it would be delicious. But Tesco dried pasta with a bit of Dolmio on is not good. Just like if I was in France, I'd have escargot. That's what snails is, isn't it? If I, if I got the wrong word there. Um, but I'm not going to eat a snail out of the garden. That's why you make the sauce yourself rather than using dolmio. But why bother when I can make better food quicker and enjoy it more? You're not going to convince me that pasta is anything other than just quick cheap student food it's like super noodles you only offend italy with pasta don't talk that way about rice i can't eat rice i'm i, I don't want to say i'm allergic to rice because i'm not a uh, hipster um but rice always makes me have bad poos so i don't eat rice really I quite like rice as well, but I just don't eat it. Nice to see you here. I followed you from YouTube. You ever had snails? In France, I have. Not in the garden. <laughs> I like pasta, but not enough to try. To try what? I don't understand. Was that sentence going somewhere? I think you need to visit a restaurant, Kev. Pasta can be amazing. I've got my coaching license. Jobs. Can we do another one? Get, come on, Wayne. Give me another one. Um, That's one thing I've never and probably would never order in a restaurant. I cannot imagine going to a restaurant and wasting the opportunity for a nice meal out on pasta. If I'm going to a restaurant, I'm having something good. I'm not having pasta. Yeah, Wayne's not even letting me discuss it now. Can only hipsters be allergic to things? I'm afraid so. It's, it's a big side of being a hipster and as a massive food hipster. Gluten and lactose. Proper food hipster. What do I have with curry? Naan bread? Found you thanks to the Apollo and save. I enjoy watching you. It was unusual Just to see a non Greek managing a team from my country. Awesome. Dorsey boy, thank you for the sub. I watch you here and watch your two YouTube videos before bed. I think I might be watching you too much. Nah, there's no such thing. Because I'm a massive hipster thing. I'll put my beanie on immediately. You need to get yourself a beard and glasses. That's the first step to being a hipster. 
Um, you, the beanie's fine in the short term, but you really should be trying to grow a man bun under there. Whether spoons do a good pasta, I mean, my word. <laughs> if ever there was an advert for not having pasta, whether spoons do a good one? Oh, well, if whether spoons are doing pasta, it must be good because none of their food is horrible microwave trash. Yeah, just are you are you telling me you like curry and naan with no rice? You're questioning if I just have curry and naan with no rice. Yeah, I'll usually have curry, naan, some poppadoms. I mean, if I'm feeling if I'm feeling extravagant, might get some um, Bombay potatoes. Is that what they're called? Um, Sagaloo, is that the cauliflower thing? And uh, maybe an onion bhaji. Whoever spoons food's only good to stop yourself getting drunk from cheap booze. Exactly. Okay, I've just popped in to apologise for my outburst earlier and so, and say so sorry about Bobby copping. I heard. I, I mean, yeah, the, the Bobby copping thing is sad. Bobby copping thing is sad. Did you have an outburst? I don't remember you having an outburst. I just remember you being wrong about pickle. Yeah, the Bobby copping thing is sad, but at least we're looking after him, which is nice. Oh, we've got a lot of we've got a lot of Weatherspoons fans in. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, as a non-drinker, I'd rather like put a nail through my scrotum than go to Weatherspoons. But I suppose each to their own. Weatherspoons chicken wings are surprisingly good. I mean, I, I imagine they're not. I can't imagine they are. I don't think I'd be surprised. I think I would get exactly the quality of chicken wings that I was expecting to get if I got some from Weatherspoons. I don't know if it came through, but I was quite livid with you for teaching me something horrific I couldn't unknow. <laughs> but that's like, oh, that's brilliant. Um, that's that's cheered me up quite a lot. Spoons should be just for students. The only time I've been to Weatherspoons in like the last five years has been the Sunday morning after MGPX in Peterborough where we go and have a big Weatherspoons breakfast because it's cheap and, you know, you can't microwave fried eggs. So, you know, you're at least getting something reasonably freshly cooked. Spoons food, surprisingly good, but the whole general vibe is... Yeah, the thing about Weather Spoons is it's always the place where no matter what time of day you go in there, there's just that sad old man with a racing post on his third pint of the morning. And it's like, oh, just... I want you to get help in this place to close and never reopen. Weather Spoons serves a purpose. What, to keep those people away from the places I want to be? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what it is. The poached eggs are microwaved. I mean, microwaving is a pretty, uh, a pretty simple way to avoid messing up a poached egg. Poached eggs are, are quite tricky. Do 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 do. Ruddles is 99p for a reason. Was Ruddles that... Was that the Rutland Bitter stuff? I remember quite liking that back when I used to drink. As far as beer goes, I was never a big beer fan, but Ruddles, I think, I because it was nearby, I quite liked it. But then I didn't really like beer, so I wasn't much of a judge. Watered down 99p a pint Ruddles is not the one. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's not. 99p a pint, that's mad. I don't ever remember beer being that cheap. And I started sneaking into pubs in about 1996. Do, 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 do. 
Come on, boys and girls. Oh, no, not those boys and girls. I meant... Oh, good, it's just that. I meant my boys and girls. Gig Doyle, thank you very much for the sub. 11 months. Can't beat a carvery for pub grub. Are we talking Toby carvery or generic independently run carvery? Because any time I go to Toby carvery, I always come away with a headache. Because I think there's so many chemicals pumped into the meat. I'm just quite... Fu Bear in mind how weird my food choices generally are. I am quite fussy when it comes to where I'll eat out. Oh, why are we rubbish? More. We've got to stop conceding goals. Do more. What's next? Just another session. Could we expect something like a pollen? Yes. Yes, you can. It won't be in Greece. It won't be a pollen. You can expect something a bit like that, though. I've got plans for a couple more YouTube series yet this year. Whether I'll get to do them both depends on how quickly the two that are there now end. Shooks, thank you for the sub. That was not good enough. We've let TNS back in here. What's my favourite place to eat out? Generally, I'll always hunt down barbecue. It's hard to really mess up barbecue. I mean, there's a place in Lincoln that managed to achieve it, even though it's quite hard. But generally, barbecue food is, because there's so much sauce on it, it's pretty hard to get it really badly wrong. So I'll usually aim for a barbecue place. If I have to go chain restaurant, I'll probably aim for something like TGI Fridays. Which is always quite nice. What non league legend was going to be super fast this year, but some hurdles. Are, yeah, I mean, it usually finishes around about April, I think. Um, yeah, I quite like sushi. Um, I, I, I wouldn't go out of my way to have it, but if it's there, I'll eat it. Sushi's all right. If we're to remortgage the house, Five Guys is nice. I don't get that comment. You hear people say that kind of stuff a lot, and I think people are, for some reason, comparing it to eating at McDonald's rather than comparing it to going to Frankie and Benny's or Pizza Hut or somewhere like that, where it's the same kind of price for a meal as any of those places. Yeah, it's more than McDonald's. Because it's proper food. It's actually nice. Five Guys isn't really overpriced. Five Guys is fine because it's really good quality. Wagamama is good. Yeah, I really do like Wagamama. Wagamama is really good. If I'm doing a chain restaurant, actually, Wagamama is a good shout. I really want to try Five Guys at least once. You should. It's really, it's a really good burger. It's overpriced in the UK, about 40% cheaper in America. But you could say that about everything. Everything's cheaper in America. So it's not really a fair comparison. You can't compare it against how much the same product is in America. You should compare it against similarly, similar, similar quality places to eat in the UK. And compared to them, it's the same sort of price. I don't get how Five Guys don't do a veggie burger because that's not what they're for, I guess. Don't go to Five Guys if you don't want to eat meat. I remember Anna went there asking for their gluten-free option and they just wrapped wrapped her burger in lettuce rather than putting it in a bun. <laughs> um, their idea of a vegetarian option is you get the bun, the, all the salad and toppings and just they don't put a burger in it. It's basically a cheese and salad sandwich. I think that attitude's quite amusing because, I mean, if you're if you're a vegetarian, don't go to Five Guys. Go somewhere else. It's the burgers that they they do. Five Guys near me won't deliver to me, and it annoys me because the Burger King next door will. I just want a burger with far too many chips. <laughs> 
I'm looking to get the M1 Mac Mini in America it's 580 euros and in Ireland it's 780 doesn't make sense what you have to remember though is in America prices are quoted pre-tax whereas I don't know if Ireland's the same but certainly in the UK the price is quoted are after tax so we don't get sales tax put on afterwards we have the VAT included in the price that's quoted so they're not always completely fair direct comparisons up to 30 pounds is a bit pricey just depends on what you're willing to pay yeah but if you went to wagamama I mean, if we, if me and Anna went to Wagamama and only spent 30 quid, we'd be like, wow, that was really cheap. So going to Five Guys and spending 30 quid, I would put them on a similar level of deliciousness. Come on, boys, we can't afford another slip up. Right, we don't need to see a penalty replay. We need to look at the league table. I miss Wagamama since moving further north. What, is Wagamama only in the south? MK and below. What, Wagamama? That's not right. There's a Wagamama in Nottingham, for sure. There must be. Yeah, there you go. Basic Greg saying, I'm in Sheffield and we have Wagamamas. We've been to Wagamama in Birmingham. We've been to Wagamama in Manchester, I think. Yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, I was going to say, Wagamamas all over the country. Uh, we're losing now, which is not good at all. And there's a Taco Bell in Nottingham. Taco Bell is possibly the worst takeaway food I've ever had. And bear in mind, I said earlier, I really like Mexican food. I'd never had Taco Bell until we were in Nottingham a few years ago. Got it on Deliveroo and it was just vile. It was worse than having an old El Paso kit. It was also awful. If that's what Taco Bell is like in America, I don't understand how it became a recognised brand name across the world. It's trash. I need someone who's had Taco Bell in both the UK and the US to tell me if it's any different. Taco Bell's considered garbage tier fast food in Canada, at least. Okay. Yeah, like I say, I was really looking forward to it. I was excited and it was rubbish. Right, if we lose this game, we're ending the stream. Like I said before, I'm not going to sit here and play through a terrible run of form and watch another league title slip through our fingers because of this stupid winners group thing i'd rather reset the random number generator and try again on sunday i've not had it in the uk but i can't imagine why it would be worse you have to have it for the right reasons i mean i like tacos and burritos and things was my reason and then what i got was like a dorito with some dried out meat on it it was horrible Here in Northampton, we have Taco Bell, and it's rubbish. Nice. Um, well, there we go. That's that's your lot for tonight, boys and girls, because it's happening again, and I don't know why. We just have a bunch of bottle jobs in our midst. Look, we've hit the championship group, and it is happening again. We've played four games and won only one of them. It is the same story three seasons in a row. We need to reset the random number generator. We'll be back at 7 o'clock on Sunday 
in the hope that exactly that has happened. We'll finish the season Sunday night. We'll probably get into some transfers and some job hunting Sunday night as well. But for now, we're going to find somebody to raid. Um, who are we going to raid? Um, football manager 2021. We might raid. Who might we raid? I think we're going to raid Omega Luke because isn't he pushing for partner at the moment? So it's always nice to help someone over the partner finishing line. So raid Omega Luke. Is that his full name on here? Omega Luke Gaming. Let him know that Kevy, soon to be six times, sent you. And I'll see you back here Sunday night, 7pm, where we'll finish the season and have a jolly good time doing it. I've said jolly three times tonight. I'm really quite enjoying it. The dream is still alive. Did I?